Holm is with us. She is with us via Zoom. Hi. Um, so, uh, again, we just want to say welcome to tonight's PBUSD board meeting. We do have translation in Spanish. If you need that support, please see Urania Lopez. Tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita de este servicio, por favor, pase con Urania Lopez. Um, so, we also um, ask that if anybody has something to share, that you put in a um, speaker card prior to that agenda item starting on the agenda. Once the agenda item has started, no additional speaker cards will be taken. Um, please hand those to Eva Renteria um, prior to that agenda item at the end, and each speaker will have two minutes. Um, we do have a couple of clarifying questions for two that we do not have an agenda item. Um, Sean Schotter and Nat Lowe, is that for what agenda item? You're going to pass? Okay, so it would have been 7.1, but you're going to pass. And Nate? Public comment, 7.1? Okay, um, with that, now um, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance and in honor of Veterans Day coming up and our very own trustee who is a veteran, I'm going to ask Trustee Soto to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Perfect. Okay. Now moving to item 3.3, .3, our uh, superintendent comments. Superintendent Murray Sheckman will make a few comments now. Actually, just one comment. I appreciate everyone's presence tonight. It's democracy in action. Um, but I also want to uh, honor our veterans. Do we have any veterans in the audience besides Oscar Soto? Any other veterans? All right. Congratulations. Thank you. On Saturday, on Saturday, on Veterans Day, there is a parade that will start at St. Patrick's Church. Veterans will gather at the church, walk along Main Street, and come to Watsonville High. Join us in the Mellow Center where Leon Panetta will present and honor our veterans. I know we all know Leon Panetta, our former Secretary of Defense and Chief of Staff for the President of the United States. We're very honored. Uh, he's from the Central Coast, and he gives a great speech. So thank you, veterans, for what you've done and your service. And there's a free uh, breakfast or lunch whenever time you get to Applebee's. We'll have a ticket for you. You'll take the ticket. You go to Applebee's, and they'll say congrats and thank you also. And you have lunch, and you won't have to pay for it. All right? Thank you so much. Thanks for being here, folks. That's my report. Thank you, Superintendent Sheckman. Um, and moving on to item 3.4, we'll have our governing board comments, and we will start with our student trustee. Um, good evening, everyone. I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that Transgender Awareness Week is coming up next week, along with the Transgender Day of Remembrance, I believe on November 20th. And on another note, um, I would like to see the board bring back the renewal of the contract with the Community Responsive Education Program, also known as CRE, and do more research on CRE before voting. Students would like to ensure that our teachers are learning from professionals in their fields who can speak from their personal experiences to bring a more in-depth perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee DeSerpa. Thank you. Um, I've been attending um, several fundraisers in the community um, for the Pajaro Valley Health Trust, for Dominican Foundation, um, and for the Diversity Center. They've been every event was beautiful and a worthwhile um, endeavor to help the community. Thanks. Trustee Soto. All right, I've got a little bit of time to make up. So I want to apologize right off the top uh, for my absence for the last few meetings. Um, some of you may or may not have heard, but I'm recovering from a motorcycle accident. It was pretty significant. It's been about seven weeks now. Um, I'm not 
but I'm here and I'm on two feet. Thank God, because uh, could have been a lot worse. Um, I want to acknowledge the veterans as well for this week. You know, Veterans Day coming up. Um, the world is in a very tumultuous time right now, and it's time to really take time and honor and salute those gentlemen and women that are out there for us to make sure that we can sit in a in a room tonight without worrying about somebody coming through that door and doing something you know that we all don't want to happen so it's something to think about and that's why they're out there that's why a lot of us uh volunteered you know in our day to make our stand as well to protect our country and i take a lot of pride in that a lot of pride in that. Um, finally, I want to mention uh, the availability of a scholarship through the Elks. The uh, Benevolent Prote uh, Protective Order of Elks has some scholarships available. For those students that are out there or in the audience that are interested in applying, you can go to elks.org and look into that. They're pretty significant scholarships, and um, they'll take care of you. Know, for a good, good portion of your of your college uh, tuition. So, thank you, everybody. Good night. Trustee Balanoska. Yes, thank you, everybody, uh, for being here and for those watching us online. Just a couple comments. I want to thank Extended Learning and everybody who went to Gilroy Gardens and had a great time a couple Saturdays ago. I was there with the orchestra from El Sistema. I had two great performances. Obviously, it was a lot of fun. That was my first time to Gilroy Gardens. That place is pretty amazing. I can see why everybody keeps going there. Uh, so thanks to Extended Learning and everybody who helped organize that. I want to thank uh, Superintendent Checkman and Supervisor Glenn Church uh, for a good meeting at Pajaro Middle School a couple weeks ago or within the last couple weeks, talking about recovery and restoration efforts there and partnerships with Monterey County. Uh, that was a productive discussion and uh, look forward to continuing those conversations. I want to acknowledge uh, an amazing choir show that I attended on Saturday night at Aptos High School. What a beautiful performing arts center, I gotta say. Uh, an amazing performance by the Aptos Junior and Aptos High choirs. I was really impressed, and I wanna congratulate the teacher. We have a new teacher there, Jessalyn Levine, for a phenomenal job and all of our students. So looking forward to more of those. And finally, I did uh, get a tour of Esperanza Farms, which is now supplying our students with healthy, organic, local food. And they, in partnership at PV High, are hosting a rally uh, about Farm the Cafeteria there on Monday. And I'm looking forward to attending that. I want to thank our district for supporting them as well. Uh, and I think we're going to be hearing more about that, hopefully, at a future board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Dodge, Jr. Um, I just like to say good evening, everybody. You know, it, it's good to see we have a packed house. That's that's what we like to see here. Uh, just a couple of events I attended. I, I saw the Watson High football team won at the last second on a field goal, and so I just like to thank the coaching staff, the players, um, all the fans that came out to support the students. I was also able to attend the Dia de los Muertos event in the cafeteria held by teachers Mr. Pozo and Novoa. And I would also like to, to recognize the veterans. Um, when I went to Watsonville High from 96 to 2000, I remember seeing the names on the rock, you know, from all the soldiers, all the veterans, World War I, II, Vietnam, Korea, um, you know, all those that served in Afghanistan and uh, the Gulf Wars. I, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm here because we have to continue to support the veterans, you know. You know, it's, uh, it's you know, the veterans went, you know, my age, younger, and uh, I think, you know, we want to serve our country and sometimes, you know, they say things that they didn't ask to be a part of, but they went and served. And so I just like to thank the veterans. Thank you. Trustee Flores. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. I also want to apologize for missing last um, meeting. I wasn't feeling well, but I did watch online. Um, so thank you to all who were here and who commented. Um, I wasn't able in the last meeting to give you an update on the intergovernmental meeting that we did, uh, I attended. And that focused on, the, you know, the city of Watsonville really is preparing for this upcoming rainy season. And they want to make sure to st stay in close contact with PVUSD so that we are ready with the plan, you know, should roads get closed or anything should happen. So I was happy to hear that we're going to be more prepared this season than we were last. Um, I also did a campus visit at Cesar Travis Middle School with Superintendent Sheckman. And Principal Benavides took us around to a few classrooms, and I was able to do a really good tour of their wellness center there and learn a lot about what the students get to use that um, center for, and which was really great. And I encourage all my fellow trustees to take advantage of you know a, a visit with, with Superintendent Sheckman. It was really informative. Um, I also was able to have a meeting with um, Principal Vahey at Landmark Uni Elementary. Um, we asked that Courtney um, Lindbergh, who is the Director of Public Works for the City of Watsonville, she was able to meet with us and walk Ohlone, and we were able to share our concerns with her regarding you know, traffic safety for the, for the children who are trying to walk to school. So that was really great, and um, Courtney seems amazing. She's the new director um, there at the Public Works, and she's gonna, she listened to us and said if we have any parents that want to listen to her. So for this goes, she wanted me to extend this invitation to all campuses that she's willing to you know, hear our concerns and make sure that we can have um, safe routes for our children to walk to school. Um, and lastly, I just want to I just want to say that I really hope that everyone's taking advantage of our um, community input sessions for the, our superintendent search. Um, there was one yesterday, there's one going on now, and there's one tomorrow at PV High School, which I'll be attending. And then we also have some Zooms um, if you're not able to attend one in person. So I definitely encourage you to look on our website to see when those are so that you can um, take give us your input because that's exactly what we want to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Uh, President Dr. Holm. Thank you. you. Um, so I uh, participated in the agenda setting committee meeting, and I just want to note that we did have you know, one agenda request that was not included in tonight's agenda, which was to bring back the CRE contract for ethnic studies training for administrative staff. And the committee voted with a majority declining to add it and have the board's focus be on the superintendent search. and. I have mentioned to our superintendent uh, my appreciation for the Winston Churchill quote, um, democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. Yet I firmly believe that the best answer to and protection against authoritarianism and fascism is standing up for democratic principles. That is even more important as elected officials. We hold positions of power, but it is representative power and we each have a duty to represent a plurality. That doesn't mean the temptation to use any means available if a vote doesn't go the way we want doesn't hold a certain appeal. As such, I believe in honoring vote results, even during instances where I personally disagree. My hope is that the board will find a path to having a clear and open dialogue about this important issue that our, con our constituency is rightfully very invested in. So thank you. Thank you, President Holm. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll start. I just want to again um, thank you and honor um, and acknowledge our very own Trustee Soto and thank him again for his service as a veteran and as a veteran and those others in the meeting tonight and all veterans. Hopefully, many will take part in this event this Saturday. Um, also want to just briefly um, speak to, yes, Agenda Setting Committee did have a conversation around the topic of our ethnic studies and is considering what we can do going forward in the future and including uh, potentially having a special study session around the topic where all voices can be heard from all perspectives. So we are um, looking at that and looking at the board's calendar and schedule to see what we can uh, fit in in the future. Um, 
with regards to what else is a very prevalent and important activity that this board has going on right now, as well um, as this district as a whole, is our search for our superintendent. Um, I did attend the meetings last night at Watsonville High. Um, very disappointed in a very, very low turnout um, of that meeting. Uh, we did have a virtual meeting today, one at Aptos High. As Trustee Flores already noted, there will be one at PV High tomorrow. I really actively want to encourage all members of our community who are here tonight or viewing this online um, to partake in these meetings, right? The board recognized the public and the public's input as part of this search. This is one of your mediums of platforms to be a voice in that. So if you haven't attended one of those meetings, we hope to see you tomorrow night out at PV High at 6 o'clock, I believe it is, right? In what room? Six. What, and do we know what room? Did everybody hear? Did you want to speak in your mic? I'm sorry. Um, um, English will be in the cafeteria at 6 o'clock, and then we also have um, room H119 for Spanish speakers. Perfect. Um, so please, please be a part of that. Um, and there is as well right now going on, um, the survey I believe is open the 7th, open through the 7th and is open through the 17th. Um, one of the things that um, I did bring up to uh, Superintendent Sheckman was my concern and in realizing and putting the pieces together of the time frame that um, Leadership and Associates gave us in looking at some commitments that were made but are not in the time frame that concerned me. So I just want to put those as part of the public record now because I've already shared them with Superintendent Sheckman. Um, at the meeting we had, it was a special study session back in August, um, I believe in replacement of the meeting of the evaluation of the superintendent. Um, leadership and associates came to the board. We had two board members who could not be here that night due to serious, unexpected, compelling reasons. Um, as well as for myself, I wanted to wait to have the public's input and had requested that once leadership and associates has collected all that, they bring it back to this board in public session before flying the position to finalize things. Um, realizing though that the intent is to fly the position on Monday, December 4th, the board's next regular meeting is December 6th. So I would hope that I don't know how leadership and associates missed that. That was made part of the public record at that meeting to bring this back before that. So hopefully um, Superintendent Sheckman and his staff can work with leadership and associates to delay that posting until it could be brought back on the board's agenda on the December 6th meeting. Okay. And that will do it for my comment. Moving on to 3.5. Um, oh, and I do have one acknowledgement with gratitude for the donation by the Valencia Home and School Club for the purchase of an AED. Now moving on to 3.5. Uh, we have our high school student reports. Do we have Diamond Tech Institute here? Or are they, or is it a virtual presentation? Okay. Good evening, present home, board of trustees, and interim superintendent, Mr. Sheckman. I'm Diamond Tech ace -B president, Orion Duran. Our current character education theme for quarter two is collaboration. We chose collaboration as the holidays are a great time to come together and support those we care about, as well as those who are in our care. With that said, we will be launching our annual Adopt a Family event. We're looking for a family in our community who's in need during this holiday season. We'll begin taking donations immediately after the Thanksgiving break. Please help us support those in need in this community. You can drop off wrapped donations at Diamond Tech until December 15th. Our October activities began with our biannual La Polka. It was another successful event and helped to raise money for ASB. We even had folklorico dancing. We close out the month with the Spirit Week, which included pumpkin painting, classroom trick-or-treating, and of course, dress-up days all week long. Between these two events, we are very, very busy. We finally have our new office manager, Emilce Mendoza, 
who joined us last week, and we're happy to welcome her as a white tiger. We also unveiled our annual school t-shirt, which was a design competition in My Design One. It also happened to be a sketch of our business teacher, Mr. Tennant, who was so excited that he provided a sheet cake with his face on it for the whole school to celebrate. We did get a chance to get out and have a little fun, though. We took two field trips. One was at the Plantasticus, event at the Exploratorium for Agriculture and Agri-Science, and the other was to the Maker Fair in the Bay Area for Engineering. Dimetech has a blend of wall-to-wall, -wall college preparatory, and career technical education through project-based learning. Ms. Keller reviewed our CASP scores at our last assembly, and I wanted to honor our class of 2024 by sharing our test results, because we're extremely excited about our accomplishments. Compared to the state average for ELA, which was about 55%, we scored with 80% of our students achieving standards met. In math, the state average was 27%, and we scored 40%. On the CAS science scores, that state average was 30%, and we scored 45 Of course, our teachers want to see us going to 100% uh, scoring proficiently. We are very proud that we are in the upper 50th percentile for the state of California. Go White Tigers! Thank you again for this opportunity to share what we've been doing at Diamond Tech. If you'd like to know more about what our school is doing, please don't hesitate to stop by our website or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and come check it out. We won't see you until next year, so happy holidays. Uh, next, we have New School. Good evening, esteemed Board of Trustees, Intern Superintendent Murray Checkman, and audience. My name is Itzela Naya, and this is Kali Lewis. We are both new to New School this year. Thank you for having us here tonight. Hi, I'm Kali Lewis. This is my first year at New School. I came to New School because I thought it would be the best school in the area to receive my credits that I'm missing. And what I really like about New School is that the teachers really like get along with the students more than at other schools I've been to and they're more hands on and they really make sure you're understanding what they're teaching. At New School we celebrate the small victories and one of those is attendance. Re research shows that if you show up to school on time every day your grades will get better. That's why Ms. G makes breakfast on Friday for all the students that show up every day on time for that week. We started our 11th outdoor and character development program on October 19th at Mother Nature's Temple. Sorry. We started our 11th outdoor school and character development program on October 19th at Mother Nature's Temple in Santa Cruz Mountains. We hiked, performed team building exercises, painted, carved wood, and also practiced archery. During the second day of our outdoor site, our, our outdoor school and character development program, we helped Food Wet with their harvest festival at their UCSC farm by teaching students and adults how to make corn husk dolls and seed bombs for their gardens. Day three of our outdoor school and character development program was spent during Monterey mushrooms, the touring the largest mushroom grower in the world. <laughs> Tomorrow will be the on-site day for our outdoor school and character development program. When, when we will work on garden projects, tie-dye t-shirts for students and for all our program partners, as well as picking up trash in our surrounding neighborhoods, on November 16th we'll be working, on our s working at Second Harvest Food Bank and then you're all invited to New School Thanksgiving on Tuesday, November 21st. Our students of the month for November were Itzel, Anaya, and Froilan Morano. <laughs> Thank you to Expanded Learning for bringing us pizza with Judy G. It is a great way to relax at the end of Monday and get to know each other better. We recently had a LGBTQ panel um, at our school yesterday, and I think it was a, a great way to let students know that they have support around them 
and they're never alone. New School continues to compete in Monterey Bay Alternative School Athletics League volleyball tournaments every Friday. Our advisory classes are filled with many, many very many engaging programs, such as community circles, Zone to Grow. We recently had a visit from the people at Zone to Grow. It was fun learning more about the program. Our teachers use Zone to Grow to help us understand our feelings and emotions. And that's it. Thank you for listening to. So those are the only two schools I had noted. Do we have, no, if we have anyone else? Those are it, okay, thank you. All right, moving on to item 4.1, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a motion to approve the agenda. Can I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote carries seven zero zero zero. Okay, moving on to item 5.1, approval of the October 25th, 2023 board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Can I have a second? Second. Perfect. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Vote carries seven zero. Abs abstain. Oh, excuse me. Seven zero. Oh, six. Yeah, I got to subtract one. Hold on. Let me do some math. Six zero one. Okay. And moving on to item six point one, the public disclosure of the collective bargaining agreement between PBUSD and CWA. And this report will be presented by our new CBO, Kim Sims. Is this working? <laughs> okay. Um, my name's Kim Sims. I'm the interim CBO. Just met you all last time. The board meeting, I think, was my first day last two weeks ago. Um, I'm here to present the um, the AB 1200 requirement where when we settle with a bargaining unit, then you need to present the... Um, I brought my, long, my wrong page. Anyway. Um, so we're required by law but to disclose in a public meeting the major provisions and costs of a written agreement with its represented employees. These laws are intended to ensure that the public is aware of the known costs within a pr proposed agreement before it becomes binding in the district. So you should have in your packet the actual estimates of what the costs are and the three multi-year projections, three years. And um, the total cost of the agreement is $480,000. There's also a letter from the county office um, that accepts the agreement, I believe. Um, but I just wanted to point out in the multi-year part of the, the, um, the agreement is 23-24. Um, um, we are deficits projected to deficit spend in the unrestricted side by $3.5 million. And the county, the, the superintendent, the county office of education has um, said that in the letter. And then the second year out is 3.9 million. And then 25, 26, if we continue in the same strain without making any cuts to our unrestricted ongoing funds is gonna be 7.5 million in that third year. We still are gonna meet the required 3% minimum. So the county office is going to approve the agreement. I just wanted to make sure those items were aware. So we recommend that you accept the agreement later on and this is gonna be the cost to the district. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, any discussion from the board? Trustee DeSerpa. Um, I, I, I'm, happy that um, this was settled and that we've increased the rates to our substitute teachers and yes. um, and that hopefully will help uh, bring more subs into the district so um, will we be publicizing the new rates 
aside from EdJoin, will we? Be, is there any marketing going on to attract new employees? Yeah, it'll be updated on our website. We'll have the new contract, the new salary schedule, and, and all the other communications we put out with okay. for hiring. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we are now moving on to item 7.1, our visitor non-agenda items. Um, this is our public comment. Um, this is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. We do want you all to know um, that through the Brown Act, it prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items, but the governing board of directors is listening to you. I also want to just make a brief comment that I do see a lot of new faces in our audience here tonight. So I just wanna take a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion. Sometimes those differences of opinion can be strong differences. I ask that you please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking and this will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct its necessary business. With that, do we have any public speakers this evening, Trustee Flores? We do, and I will call you up um, by three, and I ask that you please line up behind the podium. I have Chris, oh, and please correct me if I have your name wrong. Uh, Chris Webb, Cynthia Lewis, and Christine Hong. And I apologize if I um, left this out. Each public speaker has two minutes. Good evening. Um, I wanted to take the take my time to uh, read my student's comment from last time. Uh, he can't be here, um, but his his name is Andy Salazar, and he's from Renaissance High School. And he had a comment about Measure L funding. Quote: The school Renaissance High is more focused on the looks of things, such as wasting money on a staff room to be remodeled instead of fixing up our soccer field for the for the students. A soccer field provides opportunity for students to engage in physical activity and to genuinely play and practice. A staff room would not benefit the teacher, would not benefit the students nor the teachers. It would only benefit the eyes of the teachers to be more pleasurable to look at. We could use the funds to add things such as wrestling mats for a wrestling team or renovating the buildings in the back of the school and turning them into something to benefit students and their interests. The funds could be even used for a workshop for mechanics or even a room for another elective that interests the students. A soccer field not only can provide physical activity for students, but also serves as a capital asset that can generate revenue for the school. It wasn't, I wasn't able to make the site council due to work and wasn't ever notified that the use of these funds were on the agenda, but this is my written statement as a student." End quote. So I think it's really important for us to, if we want to do our best, uh, we have to be hearing the students. And obviously I'm here with my, my own children. Um, I just want to say that when I'm, since I've had them in my life, um, they do inform my, my service here. And I ask myself when changes come, would I want this for my own students? And if I wouldn't want it for my own students, then, I mean, if I wouldn't want it for my own kids, then I don't want it for my own students. So that does color my um, views here. And another thing I just wanted to share was, well, I'll share it another time. Thank you. I'm not sure when to begin, but <laughs> good evening. My name is Cynthia Lewis, and I'm Associate Dean of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the Social Science Division at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and also former chair and current professor of education. As someone who is also Jewish, I'm here to say that I was terribly disappointed and surprised by the board's decision to end the contract of CRE. The, the ethnic studies consultants, given that there was no evidence provided that CRE consultants are anti-Semitic. And in fact, I know them not to be. 
I'm very much hoping that the board will reconsider their decision not to return to this agenda item. As someone who, whose work includes the education of future educators, I was especially disappointed to see that teachers were not consulted in this matter, and I can't imagine that they feel trusted as, profession, as the professionals that they are. It is difficult to educate future teachers and support their passion for being change agents and role models for kids when they know that these experienced and excellent teachers are not being supported. It is the teachers who know how important ethnic studies is for their students, and this is, is confirmed by a good deal of research on the effectiveness of ethnic studies, including higher graduation rates and increased engagement in school. This is the last leg of a three-year journey with CRE that was going very well. It was to focus on administrators and school leaders who have such an important role to play in the continuing rollout of ethnic studies. And I think it's a terrible loss that they will not have the support of experts in the field as they continue their work. Again, as a Jewish educator who knows anti-Semitism when I see it and when I experience it, there was no anti-Semitism anti present in the work of CRE. Thank you, but I that's asked, time. I ask that the board reconsider the decision. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Christine Hong. Um, I served as the inaugural chair of the Department of Critical Race and Ethnic Studies at UC Santa Cruz. I am currently the director of the Center for Racial Justice. And um, I would like to say that at the beginning of this meeting, the student trustee spoke and stated that the contract with CRE should be back on the agenda. I have been here week after week. I've heard teachers say this. I've been here. I've heard community members say this as well. And although Trustee Holm described this as a democratic process, this seems to me to be an abuse of process. And I would also say that when there is an example of someone hurling a highly inflammatory, life-altering accusation against someone without substantiating it, that to me has an earlier historical example. And it's not democracy, it's McCarthyism. And this is a moment in which certain people are getting blacklisted. Their lives are being altered because they have been targeted with these slanderous charges. And it also has a long history in this country when accusations are made against people of color. There's no attempt to substantiate it with evidence, and their lives are altered as a result. I would like to introduce into the record a petition to support Dr. Allison Tiango Kubales um, and CRE. And there are 63 organizations that signed on to this and over 1,600 individuals as well. And so I would just say something. You are witnessing broad demoralization and there's no accountability for the, the decisions that were made. And I would like to just, I'd, I'd like to give this to you. Thank you, record. that's time. Our next three are Nicole Beverly, Bobby Pelez, and Donald Williams. Uh, good evening, board and superintendent Checkman. Uh, my name is Nicole Beverly, and I have been a teacher at PVUSD for the past 10 and a half years. You may have heard or may not have heard that the district recently decided to dock teachers' pay for taking personal necessity days attached to Labor Day weekend, and I was one of these teachers. While our contract states that we cannot use a three-day weekend to extend a holiday, I hope that the district and you realize that things come up that are not extending a holiday, which would justify using a personal day. I hope you will see that this is the case in my scenario. When I first received the email about the possibility, I didn't think much of it because in all of the years working here, this has never happened. Nor as an employee, I've received any indication before this that it was going to happen. So um, my mom had surgery on her hip when the school year started. She planned on having me visit her in Sacramento so that I could help her take her to appointments. Uh, 
go grocery shopping, just with basic needs and to be there for her. And um, so after I got the second email, I was already in Sacramento helping her because I wasn't going to take that away. And I replied to the district telling them my situation. I, our contract also states that we can use a sick day to help a family member when we have first principal approval, and I did. I talked to my principal ahead of time, but I put it in as a personal necessity because I wanted to ensure that I had a sub for my, for my staff. Um, so when I checked my first check, it wasn't docked, and then my second check, I was docked almost $900. Um, I only hope that I can pay my bills for this month because I was not expecting it at this time because the first month it wasn't. I've been a dedicated employee for over 10 years and it makes me incredibly sad that the district has lost my trust. They're saying that my family is not important and I have no care in what ha might happen to me and my family with this pay cut. Not only that, but this will later affect my years of service when I near retirement. I hope that this is as concerning to you as it is to me. And I hope that you'll ask questions and demand that the district repays those people with compelling reasons. Thank you. Um, good evening, I'm here to speak again on the CRE contract, but tonight uh, I would like to direct my comment to those on the agenda committee. Uh, Trustee DeSerpa, you have said that you, ha you didn't see that vetting had been properly done on the CRE program. But I have worked with Allison in the CRE program, and I've never seen a single instance of bigotry or anti-Semitism. And that's vetting. The entire ethnic study team wrote you a letter and asked you to bring them back. That's vetting. Allison wrote you a letter explaining herself with extensive evidence. That's vetting. There's a petition signed by over 1,600 people in 60 organizations. That's vetting. Folks from UCSC, Watson Rose in the Heart, and the Tobera Project have all voiced their support. That's betting. Your own student trustee voiced her support. That's betting. And yet you still refuse to bring the contract back. It seems to me, Trustee DeSerpa, that the person who is not properly vetting the CRE program is you. Trustee Acosta, you have said that you are appalled that we'd be associated with a program like this. Well, it appalls me that you would say those comments without any evidence to support them. That you would have a total disregard for the people that you have hurt with the things that you have said. It appalls me that an entire team of your own teachers would ask you for what they want, and you would not support them by honoring their request. And what appalls me most of all is that two people on a board of seven that is supposed to represent all of us can block the will of the people because of their own agenda. To me, I find that a gross abuse of power, and I will not stand for it. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it always bends toward justice. Thank you. Hello, hello. My name is Donald Williams, Jr. I am the founder of Black in Santa Cruz, but I came here to share that on Tuesday, November 14th, PB High will be having their walk to school day on in Ruby Bridges. Um, for me, I actually got the honor to meet Ruby Bridges. Um, when I went to college, San Jose State actually was involved in a hate crime in 2019. And all the students band together and marched on my behalf and fought for the school to make changes. And we brought her to campus. And I was, had the privilege and honor to meet her. So I'd like to give you guys these stickers and hope that you guys come support the school, PB High. Our next three are Roz Shorenstein, Takashi Mizano, and Doug Kaplan. Good evening, uh, board and uh, Superintendent Sheckman. I speak in favor of inclusive ethnic studies, and I speak in favor of more extended study of the program. But I also speak in support of the board's decision not to renew the contract with community res responsive education. There are many reasons for this, but tonight I want to focus on the cost benefit of spending an additional $110,000 on top of the $172,000 that Pajaro has already spent on CRE in the past two years. The renewal would have brought the total to $282,000, over a quarter of a million dollars. In contrast, the other two school districts in our county, Scotts Valley and Santa Cruz City Schools, 
have had their teachers and curriculum specialists developing their ethnic studies courses without spending any money on outside consultants. Paro District students currently are enrolled in four or six accredited courses in ethnic studies, English, history, and art, implemented by your experienced curriculum specialists and teachers. Costly additional teacher training is really not required at this point. The progress of these classes can be evaluated so that the program can evolve based on student needs. And then the district will have time to explore free or low cost resources for augmenting subsequent year's classes. Input from teachers, new superintendent, and the Paro Valley community will be useful in a study session or an evaluation of the program as, uh, as it develops. As you know, Palo Alto Valley has had a large drop of enrollment leading to budget cuts going forward. What will the $110,000 be able to fund? Helping students catch up to grade level after they fell behind during COVID shutdowns, programs to prevent bullying, counseling for anxiety and depression, healthier lunches, a new soccer field for Renaissance. There are many worthwhile programs to benefit students. In summary, a cost-benefit analysis does not support renewal of the CRE contract. Ethnic time. studies will continue to be offered. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Um, <laughs> I'm Takashi Mizuno, and I'm a community member. And I was also <laughs> on the ethnic uh, studies uh, community cooperative, cooperative committee. And I had several questions to ask you, and I wrote an open letter addressed to uh, Mr. Holm, president of your board. And I'm going to read, I had have, I have four questions. I'm going to read the questions. First question is, did the board of trustees talk to Professor Eisen uh, and the CRE before the board made the decision in the board meeting on September 13th? The second question, have the Board of Trustees talked to Professor, or Professor Allison and the CRE after the Board received the letter denial of community responsive education contract due to accusation of anti-Semitism dated on October 9th from Professor Allison? Third question, did the Board of Trustees talk to PBUSD ethnic studies teachers before the Board made the decision? in the board meeting on September 13th. And the last question is, did the board of trustees talk to members of PBUSD Ethnic Studies Community Collaborative Committee before the board of made the decision, board of made the decision in the board meeting on September 13th? And regarding the letter which you received from Professor Allison, the letter was forwarded to me by her colleague at uh, San Francisco State University, my friend. He's the chair of the Department of Asian American Studies at a, at a college. And I have known him for almost 20 years. And I have trusted him, his judgment. He wrote to me that Professor Allison is one of his commended professors. Thank you. And I am going to send uh, my letter to uh, Ms. Holm by email. Okay. Okay. Please give those to Eva. Please give them to Eva. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Doug Kaplan, a former PVUSD trustee. And Trustee Acosta, you began the public uh, comments by saying that there are people in this room who strongly disagree with each other. And that's true. And I also believe uh, that there are people in this room, most of the people in this room, that share fundamental values. And that's why before we stand here talking to you, our board. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had the opportunity to sit with each other and talk? Before this district hires or rehires any consultant, 
I think it would be so beneficial for the district, for our community, if we had a conversation, a conversation about where we are, and more importantly, a conversation about where we want to be and how we want to get there. That, uh, in my opinion, is the proper next step. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three are Sarai Maher, sorry, yes, um, Minik Brooker, and Deshaun Miles. Hello, my name is Sadie Maher, and I'm a senior, and I'm an Eagle Scout at Aptos High School. In my junior year, I was faced with issues that impacted my mental and physical well-being. I'm here, to, I'm here to talk to you this evening about bullying, which we all know that happens to everybody. Unfortunately for me and for many others, it was pretty bad. It started in my fifth period Spanish class my junior year. Here's some incidents that happened to me. I had water poured on me. I had things thrown at me. And my identity as a queer student was made fun of. I could not focus in class because these students were out of their seats and being very disruptive. I told the teacher numerous times, but he did nothing. That's when I knew I had to deal with this all on my own. This was not my first brush with bullies. Since elementary school, I've been told very numerous times to just ignore it, and the bullying will stop if I just don't do anything and not fight back. I tried ignoring their behavior for weeks. I said nothing, I did nothing, but they didn't stop. Their behavior continued, they were still rowdy. Spanish class became the worst part of my day. I dreaded waking up and going to class and I hated block days because I would have to spend 80 minutes with these people. 80 bad minutes. So I sat down with admin. I reported, I reported them. I made my case. I checked on with admin numerously to ask, how's it going? And they would only tell me, we can't tell you anything. It's confidential, stuff like that. Weeks went by and it seemed nothing was changing. The behavior only continued. In fact, it only worsened. I'm here this evening to tell you that, um, sorry, I got lost. PVSD board, what will you do to keep the bullies in check and make sure the school communities that you oversee will be bully free? What will you do to prevent future generations from receiving the same treatment? Will you offer better trainings? Something to make sure that I will not be let down so I can regain my trust in the admin and in the board to make school a better, a better place that is safe, where I can be myself and where my friends can be themselves and trust the admin to take care of things. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is M. Robinson Brooker, um, Mink Brooker. It's a pleasure to uh, be up here. And on a happy note, I just wanted to inform everyone that I actually hooked up with um, AAA and they sent some merch. I am the Black Student Union Advisor at PV High. And next Tuesday is Walk to School Day um, for Ruby Bridges. And so I wanted to share this because PV High, I was told, did not have a Black Student Union. But I was asked last year if I would be the Black Student Union Advisor. And I said yes. And so this is the second year. We have a representative from the Santa Cruz County Office of Education who comes and supports our BSU meetings. And I just wanted to make sure that I left some merch with every one of you. And the other gentleman left the stickers, so hopefully you all have a Ruby Bridges sticker. It's next Tuesday, November 14th, walk to school day. However you would want to support it, I hope you do. So I just wanted to show this. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Deshaun Miles, and I am the advisor for the countywide Black Student Union. Um, so this is the second year that I've been um, participating uh, at the county, and my job is to basically put on Black grad. And so uh, 
fact, the BSU started in at Santa Cruz High, and it was just dedicated to Santa Cruz High because that's where it originated from. And then I just graduated from Mills College, so I'm just coming back. Um, this is my second year uh, with the county office. And so um, this is just my way of giving back to all of the students. And so I've been in contact with PV, with Ms. Booker, along with the Santa Cruz High BSU. And so even though it's called the Black Student Union, we're very inclusive of everybody who's in um, support and uh, allies of uh, black culture and the black students um, surrounded on campus and basically it's just to create a safe space for all of the students to feel like they can be heard um, for them to have some more support inside and outside of the school I am also just currently about to uh, help put on a workshop with the college portfolio which is basically where I'm just trying to set up all of the students with their transcripts the uh, personal essays, uh, career choices, et cetera, et cetera. And then that way I can um, bring them to a trip called the Black College Expo, uh, which is a way for all of the students to be able to possibly be accepted to colleges on the spot. If not, colleges at least try to apply for scholarships. And so this is what I've been doing for the past year. Um, and this will be my second year trying to bring more students from all of the uh, high schools. So now this year I have PV uh, in support and who are participating in these kinds of things. So thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Roberto Martinez Jimenez, Ellie Davies, and Amanda Lashaw. Uh, hello, good afternoon, buenas tardes. Uh, my name is Roberto Martinez. I'm the eighth grade science teacher at EA Hall Middle School. And I'm concerned, upset, and confused at the new district guidelines regarding eighth grade promotion and activities. A quarter and a half into the school year, we're shifting towards a new policy that had absolutely zero input at all from teachers. It does not hold students accountable and is inequitable. The standards we hold our students to are the expectations they strive to meet, and we're telling them a 1.5 is all we expect from them. We challenge students every day in our classrooms, and they meet these challenges. Last two weeks ago, I had students build a small mousetrap car with a battery and a motor, the first time many of these students ever built something. We preach equi equity, but our standards and expectations are far from it. Our mission statement over there says, we prepare, we prepare students to pursue su successful futures and make positive contributions. How are we doing this with a 1.5 expectation? How are we preparing themselves for high school, university, and the world after? We're not. It's inequitable and just not right to the students who show up every day and do their best when, they're not, when other peers are not being held to the same standards. Over there it says, high expectations, high rewards. Where has that gone? We need to challenge our students. It is how we get them to push forward. And doing this is giving up on that. It's giving up on our community. It's giving up on our students. Giving up on people like me who grew up here, other teachers here who also grew up here. We want to push our people forward. We're failing them with these expectations. So I would like us to reconsider that and have teacher input. We're the ones with them. We're the ones in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board. I'm Eli, and I use they, them pronouns. I am an ethnic studies major at CSU Monterey Bay. One of the things I love about ethnic studies is that it rewards a curious mind. Students can ask questions about history, legislation, power structures and propaganda, about settler colonialism, and in return, they gain powerful tools to analyze the world they're living in. Ethnic studies is also belonging. Ethnic studies is seeing yourself, your family, reflected in history and in school. For some, that reflection may be uncomfortable. My white European ancestors were colonizers on this land. 
but by building a threshold of tolerance for difficult conversations, I have found belonging in upholding the common struggle for the liberation of all people. I believe it is crucial that PVSD students continue to receive the ethnic studi studies education that they and their teachers already love without the disruption of starting over from scratch. When we are leading with curiosity, we can ask why, even when it's hard, we can do our homework and check the facts and maybe even heal the rift that opened during the board meeting two months ago, impacting teachers, students, and community organizations. Our children are our future, and we need to give them the tools to succeed and think critically about the power structures they inherit. I ask the board to reopen the matter of reinstating the contract with Community Responsive Education and ask they apologize to Dr. Santiago Cubales. Thank you. Hello, I'm a faculty member in the education department at UC Santa Cruz, also here to express my concern about the need to renew the contract with CRE and um, to address some of the ways that the opinions are being formed and process is playing out. Um, I want to uh, add to what's already been said tonight by sharing that we at UC Santa Cruz and in fact my colleagues across the state and across the country have been pointing to what's happening down here as a model of ethnic studies practice in development. My work is in the area of K-12 ethnic studies. I teach hundreds of students every year who are exploring careers in education. And they, we are collaborating with people in this area, teachers, teachers on special assignment, community supporters, because we are so impressed with the kind of vision that's coming out of the schools here, and we really want to support what the teachers are calling for, and that is the renewal of this contract and an apology to someone whose reputation has been damaged. There is no evidence of anti-Semitism in the work of CRE. I'm also a Jewish educator. I've been paying attention to these debates since the very beginnings of talking about developing a model curriculum. Um, and uh, there is, somebody referred earlier to disagreement among people about the vision. The truth is that among ethnic studies educators, among educators who are working to get ethnic studies into the schools, there is no disagreement. You're not gonna find other consultants who do this kind of work who have a different opinion. Uh, so I want to support the teachers, repair the trust that seems to have been broken with the teachers who are doing this work so that I can send my students here as future teachers and know that you'll have their back. Thank you. That's time. And our last two on this um, for public comment would be Nat Lowe and Gus Paz. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Interim Superintendent. My name is Dr. Nat Lowe. I'm an APSOS resident. Um, I'm an APSOS resident, um, community member, and a co-director for the Asian American Justice and Innovation Lab. I'm here to ask that the board renew the contract of CRE because that is what is best for the students of this district. I understand that there are concerns around the accusations of anti-Semitism, but I have not seen any evidence to believe that they are grounded in reality. It is said that a tree is known by its fruit. A good tree produces good fruit. Across the many comments presented over the last few board meetings, all those who have actually engaged with CRE's work have been overwhelmingly positive. PVUSD educators have talked about getting the support that they need to create good lessons for the students. Student trustee Romero Maya said that the classes have changed her perspective on the world. Um, President Holm described her child as thriving in his ethnic studies class. And community partners from Watsonville and the Heart have, have described the meaningful relationship that was developed with PVUSD and its students, into which they have invested both time and resources. In contrast, the board's hasty decision to not renew the contract without doing any due diligence in investigating the evidence for anti-Semitism has been incredibly disruptive, throwing away two years of hard work, not only by the CRE team, but also by the many PVUSD educators involved, 
and having to start over again in building local capacity for ethnic studies, which means that students lose out. It has also led to the suspension of the partnership with Watsonville is in the heart. Again, both students and the broader community are losing out. I have in the past seen this board listen to the voices of the people that it serves and reverse a bad decision made. And I urge you all to do so again. Be the good tree that bears good fruit for the benefit of the students of this district. Put the CRE contract back on the agenda and vote to renew it. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Trustees, uh, President Holmes, intern uh, Sheckman. Uh, first, I want to thank you people, your speakers, because these young individuals here got to see how it works. And um, that's pretty awesome. So you're wondering why I'm here. My name is Gus Paws. I'm a wrestling coach for a long time, um, older than dirt. This last couple of years, I've been coaching at Watsonville High School. Um, still coach there. Uh, my son goes to St. Francis, so I coach at St. Francis now because he says if he, I don't coach, he doesn't wrestle, but he's got to wrestle. So this past year, with uh, the former principal, Consuela Mason, a very, very nice lady, I'm sad we lost her, and Joe Manfrey let us work out with his team. We bounced around a lot. This past year, these, these individuals got to know him personally, and we had an individual placed in the sections in the girls' division and when she was on the platform, she didn't, she didn't have a, a warm-ups. And I said, that's not right. She's representing Pajaro Valley, our schools, our community. I represented our, my community when I won state. And, and I wore the black and gold. I still wear the black and gold. So with the help with the committee of uh, the Spring Lamb, we had an opportunity to put and talking to Coach Josh Castillo at Watsonville said, you know what, let's let these kids do it. So they haven't seen it, so we're going to end this the open comments on a good on a good note here so they don't they haven't seen it so it's going to be like chris is from so they get to see their warm-ups that they work for on that cleanup picking up garbage putting away tables putting away chairs um washing dishes i mean it was it was it was some it was work they had to work for it i was co my coach my high school coach told me he goes don't look for a handout look how you can earn something the community will, that's what the community wants. Learn to work for it. Don't look for a handout. So, Coach Bob, on behalf of Rudis, here's your new warm ups for your PB High wrestling team. I know I w I'm going to go a little later, uh, real quick. On behalf of Rudis, Coach Bob, they want to give you a pair of brand new wrestling shoes. Here you go. Start your season off right. Congratulations, kids. I think I do have to agree. I think we all do. That was a wonderful way to end public comment this evening on that note. Um, moving to our employee organization uh, comments. Now is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. Each organization has five minutes. Uh, so I will call on 8.1 PVFT, our Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers. Welcome. All right. Good evening, board. Uh, Superintendent Sheckman um, and President Holm, off in Zoom land. Um, as a union, we believe that strong educational leadership must be grounded in a comprehensive understanding of the challenges and realities faced by educators and students in the classroom. It is through this lens that effective policies and decisions are made, ensuring the best possible outcomes for our educational community. I've said this before. We extend our gratitude to the board for ensuring that we had time to meet with Eric Andrews, the consultant for Leadership Associates, to share qualities we believe are valuable for the next superintendent. To name some of the top five, or the top five, one, an educator with a minimum of five years in the classroom or serving families in a certificated school position and years as a school administrator, because we firmly believe that the selection of superintendent without direct school site experience sends a message about how the district values the role of educators and support staff and the importance of classroom expertise. So that's administrative 
in addition to five years in the classroom or at a school site. Two, bilingual and somebody who is bilingual and values the importance of bilingualism and bilingual education. Three, has experienced teaching and utilizing curricula curriculum. Four, a person that is transparent and approachable with the ability to reflect and readjust. And five, a person who is a defender of public education. PVFT would like to be a part of the interview process, either through the closed panel or the community process. Another important aspect of our federation is advocating for social justice causes. In 2018, the PVFT presented a resolution to protect staff and students from the health risks of agricultural pesticides at the AFT National Convention. And then in 2021, you guys, the board, approved a resolution to improve pesticide st safety notifications in our schools. And today, a fellow member, a third grade teacher, Melissa Dennis, and I spoke at a rally against the use of toxic pesticides near our schools and communities. Lastly, we want to share about one of our grievances that we are curr currently in with the district. It's regarding our contractual right to utilize Personal Necessity Day for a compelling personal reason. This is like HIPAA in a, in a medical office when we sign off on that. It's for privacy. This has been a decades long standing practice encapsulated in our contract. This year, Human Resources decided to change their interpretation of this language. Their decision has financially harmed a couple dozen educators, some of, who, of whom have had just over $1,500 taken from their salary. We get one paycheck a month, one for the entire month. This wage theft has left some struggling to pay for daycare, buy food, pay bills, and other living expenses. And the long-term damage of withholding pay negatively impacts their retirement. The poor treatment of employees sets this district apart. And it ultimately, ultimately, this is at the expense of our students, our families, and our community. Because these people will no longer have trust in this district, and they will leave. We have fought hard the last couple of years to make our total comprehensive package in our district attractive enough to get people employed in this district. This year, again, was the first year in many years where we did not start this school year with a bunch of vacancies. And the, the expense of, um, or the lack of respect, the lack of respecting our contract language has um, just continued to uh, make that canyon, <laughs> the differences that we have greater. Something that we have been working hard to fix over these years. So at this point, the district is going to utilize public funds to figure out how to not pay its employees as opposed to just following our contract language in the decades long practice. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do. We have one, Roddy Kirkman. Good evening, President Holm, wherever you are, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Checkman. So uh, as Nellie mentioned, we do have a long-standing practice in this district of being able to utilize personal necessity for a compelling need that does not need to be disclosed. Um, I want to give you sort of a timeline of these events that how, how they went down. So our members were notified by an email from Brian Saxton if they had put in for a PN day on either 9-1 or 9-5 as that attached to the Labor Day weekend. Many of our members emailed Brian Saxton, notifying him of their need to use that and disclosing their compelling reason, even though that is not required. None of them received a response. 
They then went and got their paycheck at the end of September without any pay docked and with the PN days removed, as would have been past practice. Without any further notification from the district, they then woke up on Halloween to a nice trick, right? Not a nice trick, not a nice treat, to having that pay docked without any single notification from the district that they would do that moving forward. So not only is this building a lack, this is breaking the trust, there has been zero communication so far to these employees about next steps, about the district's decision, about how they put in those PN days, about their need for that time. So I ask, how does that support PVUSD rising with trust, joy, and belief? How does that build the morale? And then I just want to say I'm very happy that our CWA brothers and sisters got to ratify their contract and increase that pay. We know that having subs and qualified subs is a, is a just absolute benefit in our classrooms. And I want to address the deficit spending that came up because uh, for the public, deficit spending doesn't mean we're spending money we don't have. We have it. Thank you. Moving on to item 8.2, CSEA, California School Employees Association. Do we have anyone here to speak on behalf of CSEA? Good Welcome. evening, Board of Trustees and Interim Superintendent Sheckman. My name is Delilah Macedo. You all know Gus Paz. We are both executive members for CSEA Chapter 132. We would like to start by thanking the board for not voting to eliminate um, the career development specialists at a previous board meeting. We appreciate you asking questions to the district and we encourage you to keep doing so. Our negotiations team has met with the district about a half a dozen times and they are hard at work trying to come to an agreement for the current school year. They've been going back and forth on pay and allowance Many of our classified employees are looking for work elsewhere and we're trying to keep them here within the district. We would like to acknowledge our negotiations team. Our team is made up of 16 classified employees representing 16 different job families. Our um, chief negotiator and president, Richard L. Martinez. Our historian, Marissa Hernandez. Representing accounting and fiscal services, Imelda Hernandez. Um, custodial is Pablo Moran, representing facilities and maintenance, Mr. Gus Paz. Um, food services, Norma Sabla, representing grounds, Rigoberto Ornelas. The instructional division is represented by Leila Vasquez. Support and guidance is represented by Patricia Bugillon. Media is represented by Krishna Feldman. Secretarial and clerical, Kathy Bennett. Storekeeping and supplies, Curtis Fox. Technology is represented by Monty Matisson. Transportation and maintenance is represented by Johnny Martinez. Program evaluation, Diana Martinez. Human resources, Karina Rangel. And we also have our labor rep, Buddy Ranzillo, on the team. Lastly, uh, we'd like to thank all our members for giving their best every day and for um, being there for our students. Do you have anything on that? No. Everybody <laughs> have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to 8.3, Pavam, our Pajaro Valley Association of Managers. Do we have anyone here? Not tonight. Okay. Moving on to 8.4, CWA, Communication Workers of Associations, representing our substitute teachers. Hey, welcome. Hi. Good evening. Board of Trustees, Interim Superintendent Checkman, and President Holm. I'm Louis Rocha, the temporary administrator of CWA Local 9423, and I'm here in support of the tentative collective bargaining agreement reached October 17th with PVUSD. This TA was approved by over 90% of the bargaining unit. The substitute teachers represented by CWA are an essential part of the education system and are relied on to provide staff coverage when permanent teachers aren't there. Supporting substitute teachers also supports students and the community. Substitutes are also impacted by the stress and changing demands of the educational system. This tentative contract 
is a step in the right direction that demonstrates PVUSD's recognition of the critical role substitute teachers deliver daily throughout the district. The increased compensation is essential in this economy. I also know from direct feedback by substitutes that their professional development concerns are worthy of more discussion, which we look forward to collaborating with PVUSD at the appropriate times. While we do have our differences, I also would like to acknowledge Allison Nizawa and Brian Saxton for their collaborative and professional approach to negotiations. On behalf of Substitute Teachers Bargaining Unit, I urge your support on action item 10.2 and approve the tentative agreement reached with CWA. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our report and discussion items, we will move to item 9.1, the Merit System Presentation, and this report will be presented by the Director of Classified Personnel, Pam Shanks. Oh, thank you. That was quick. Um, good evening, President Holmes, Superintendent Sheckman, and Board of Trustees. Um, thank you very much for um, allowing me to come here tonight and give a presentation on our merit system. Um, it's been a very long time since I've done this, so um, I look forward to sharing some great information with all of you tonight. Um, there we go. So I'm going to just start with some introductions. I'm Pam Shanks, Director of Classified Personnel. Um, I have worked in the human resources field for over 26 years, working with Cabrillo College, the city of Santa Cruz. Pajaro Valley back in the early 2000s, um, the Santa Clara County Office of Education, and then started as a director of HR here back in 2009, so I've, um, almost 15 years as the director. Um, the field of human resources is challenging, innovative, and every day there is something new to learn and tackle, which is what makes this work so rewarding. I do have my personnel commissioners here tonight and would like to also introduce them. Um, Casey O'Brien. Um, is current the current board appointed uh, commissioner and chairperson and has served in that role since August of 2022. Mr. O'Brien has over 24 years as a school administrator and has been a great asset to the personnel commission in his thoughtfulness, curious questions, and strong support of classified employees as he's learned more about how merit systems work in a school district. Catherine Griffin. Um, is the current CSEA appointed commissioner and vice chairperson as, and has served in that role since December of 2022. Ms. Griffin worked for the PVUSD for close to 30 years as a classified employee in various roles, starting as an instructional assistant in her children's classrooms. Um, campus safety, she worked in payroll and then she ended her career with the district as a staff accountant. Um, she brings a strong work ethic, thoughtful questions and an unending support of classified employees and fairness. Um, Elvia Torres is our joint appointee um, and has served in that role since July of 2023, so just about six months. Ms. Torres has over 30 years of human resources experience. She worked at PVUSD back in the early 2000s and continued her human resources career working for various agricultural businesses in the area. Ms. Torres's background brings a unique perspective to the work of the Personnel Commission. Um, I also have an honored guest tonight. He didn't want to be recognized, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mr. Philip Gordillo. Um, he is here tonight as a strong supporter of merit systems throughout California. Um, he served at the Santa Clara County Office of Education as the Chief Human Resources Officer for eight years and as the P Classified Personnel Director for over 15 years. Mr. Gordillo currently serves as the Executive Director for the California School Personnel Commissioners Association, which is our statewide organization um, that provides a lot of support to merit districts throughout California. Um, Philip's proudest achievement is to be a 41-year classified employee. I will talk later in my presentation about having a network of colleagues throughout the state being a benefit to helping merit districts be successful in this work. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit um, oh, this is our agenda. The, uh, I went over introductions and then we're going to talk a little bit about the history of how merit systems came to be, um, the basic principles of merit, responsibilities of the personnel commission, the roles and functions of the commission, 
um, relationships with the board and the commission and the union, um, the benefits of being merit, and then also um, merit system resources as well. So a little bit of history. I'm kind of, and I'm going to be giving a, a broad overview. Many of the topics I'm going to talk about tonight could be a full day conversation, but I'm just going to be touching on all of the um, highlighted areas of a merit system. A, a merit system is a personal management system designed to ensure the practice and fairness and impartiality of the selection, retention, and promotion of classified employees. And this is, these are the ed codes that cover the merit system. Um, a brief history, there is a long history of how merit systems came to be in California, which actually started almost 100 years ago. So while the history has been around longer than anyone in this room, the tenets of why it was created are still very relevant today. So a little history in the early 1930s, political corruption was rampant throughout the city of Los Angeles. Patronage was prevalent at all levels of local government. In the LA Unified School District, the situation resulted in the firing and replacement of over 700 classified employees and replaced by friends and political um, politicians. As a result, there was a reaction from the concerned citizens who petitioned the state legislature for the establishment of an independent civil service system, um, civil service commission for the district. Um, that personnel commission came into existence in 1936 as the first legally sanctioned personnel commission in the country to administer a personnel program under a merit system for non-certificated employees in a school district. Its primary purposes were to ensure that employees are selected for employment and promotion solely on the basis of merit and removed for just cause and not just fired arbitrarily, as LA Unified did that year. Um, the PVUSD established a merit system in 1969. So some basic principles of merit. Um, recruitment from all segments of society. Um, we're a public agency, so what that means is we are looking for qualified candidates and allowing an um, equal opportunity to outside candidates to gain employment in a public sector organization. Um, fair and equal treatment of all personnel management matters and equal pay for equal work of equal value. So for example, uh, one classification the district has um, is a custodian. Um, the commission is charged with looking at surrounding total wages of custodians and making sure we can compete with other employers in our area for um, those positions. And we have 100 dif 150 different classified positions in the district, so we're always making sure that we're um, staying competitive. Some continued basic principles, high standards of integrity and conduct, uh, retention of employees who perform well, uh, mechanisms in place to help correct performance of those whose work is not adequate and separating those who cannot or will not meet the required standards of the job. Um, and protection of employees from arbitrary action, personal favoritism, or political coercion. So some responsibilities of the Personnel Commission. Um, the commission is charged with um, prescribing, amending, and interpreting rules necessary to ensure the efficiency of the classified service and selecting employees based on merit and fitness. And there's, and I'll get into that in a little bit of how we do that. Um, the Personnel Commission rules and regulations are um, based on education codes, the ones mentioned earlier, and can be found on our Personnel Commission website, on the PBUSD website. Um, the Commission is also charged with appointing a personnel director who shall be free from prejudgment and bias. So somebody who's going to look at things, follow the rules and um, look at things in a neutral way. Um, and then the commission is also charged with preparing an annual budget for its office, which upon approval from the county superintendent of schools is included in the governing board budget. Um, and again, that, there's a process for that, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. I'm not gonna read all of this, um, but there are a lot of rules in the rules and regulations, and I'm just gonna highlight a few. Um, recruitment is a big one for classified, um, so that involves applications, examinations, eligibility lists of the most qualified candidates, um, appointments, and promotions of employees. Um, the, another item is job analysis and job descriptions. As the board knows, I've brought job descriptions here before. There's a piece that the board looks at and a piece that um, the Personnel Commission has authority over. 
um, the Merit System Education Code was established um, before collective bargaining, so every area of classified employment at one point fell within the merit system. Once collective bargaining became, came about in the 1960s, those areas that are negotiable would be covered under the collective bargaining agreement and would take precedent over the merit rules. Um, the merit rules do cover all classified employees in the district though, so that also includes classified management, confidential, and professional services which are outside of the collective bargaining agreement. Um, the, um, the commission is also charged with preparing an annual budget for its office, and some of those um, areas that the budget covers are um, testing software, um, examination creation software, our annual membership dues to CSPCA, which is our state organization, advertising and recruiting, um, and commission staff training. Um, each year, CSPCA holds an annual conference that um, is relevant to staff, management, and commissioners. Um, if any board members are interested, we are actually holding our upcoming annual conference in March of 2024, and it will be held in Monterey, so it's here very locally this year. Um, Philip and I are actually both on the planning committee for the, um, that uh, conference, and the committee works really hard to provide high-quality speakers with current and relevant topics to the work that we're doing today. So personnel commission roles and functions. There's eight major items. Um, again, I'm just gonna briefly touch on these. Um, the rules and regulations um, ensure the selection and retention of employees is based on merit and fitness. Um, they are binding on the Board of Education as they pertain to the classified service. They ensure an efficient workforce. And again, not applicable to bargaining unit members if the area is within the realm of negotiations. Um, another item that they um, oversee is classification. Um, classification is a process used to define or redefine jobs based on um, duties assigned by management. Um, as I've brought to the board before, um, when administration wants to create a new job description or update a job description, um, I'm given the task of creating that class specification or job description. Um, the Personnel Commission has the responsibility under Education Code to prepare that class description and determine the title, minimum qualification, so we can um, conduct examinations, um, and designate the salary placement on the appropriate salary schedule so they can ensure internal alignment. Um, under board direction, administration prescribes those duties and responsibilities of all positions in the classified service, and the duties are discussed with the union as well. Ultimately, the commission approves the final class description. Um, typically, classification is a result of job audits, interviews, or questionnaires completed by incumbents and supervisors. Um, the commission is charged with um, creating a development of hierarchies of jobs. So we have job families that maybe have career ladders in them where jobs in have increasingly resp increasing responsibility. Um, so they're charged with making sure that positions with increasing responsibility within a job family are um, paid appropriately. And then ultimately it results in a final class description to allow us to recruit um, and also to administer our exams. The next one is um, salary. Um, the commission recommends the initial salary allocation for classifications, again, to maintain that internal hierarchy. Um, and then um, the way they do that is by surveying um, prevailing wage in both the private and public sector for in order for management and unions to use that in collective bargaining. The next area is recruitment and selection. This is kind of the meat of what we do. Um, examinations are administered objectively and con consist of test parts that relate to the job performance. So we're testing people for the work that we're gonna be asking them to do. Um, we have different types of recruitment that we conduct, promotional or open promotional. What that means is uh, promotional would be a position would only be available to current classified employees typically a higher level position if we have a broad enough applicant pool to, in order to do just a promotional um, exam. 
or open and promotional where um, open means it would be open to the public to submit an application. And that we're also um, publicizing the um, upcoming recruitments and exams that we have and that we're marketing the district as a positive employer. Again, recruitment and selection, we're developing job-related um, selection procedures that produce lists of eligibles um, who have taken the exam and that they've been successful in um, expressing their knowledge, skills, and abilities to having to do with that particular job. Um, we conduct job analysis with our supervisors. We do meet with our supervisors to go over our exam process to make sure that it's meeting their needs. Um, one example that um, we've done in the recent years is we've changed to a Google platform and we weren't t um, doing our exams with Google and so we moved to that so that we um, could be attracting and getting candidates who had that experience and skill so that they could um, hit the job running when they were hired. All right, so um, assignments is another area um, the commission has authority over and that um, all vacancies in the classified service are filled from eligibility lists. So everyone hired into a permanent position in our district needs to have gone through an exam process and be placed on that eligibility list. And that applicants are meeting the minimum qualifications based on their training and experience as determined by the commission in that job description. And uh, appointments are made from the first three ranks as well. That's in ed code. And then performance evaluation is another area um, that there are commission rules around um, where we um, administrators uh, evaluate classified employees on their second, fourth, and fifth months. They serve 130 days of probation, which is around six months. Um, and then we also uh, evaluate our classified employees annually for our permanent employees, and those are due in March of each year. And then, um, the last area is um, disciplinary appeals. So um, when disciplinary action, whether it's suspension without pay, demotion, or dismissal, all of those affect an employee's property right, which is their job, and affects their income. Um, if an action is taken by the Board of Education um, against a classified employee, the employee has an additional appeal right to the Personnel Commission. Um, and the Personnel Commission's decision is binding in that at the end of that case. Relationships and understanding and building relationships um, and stakeholders. Um, the board and commission are administrative bodies um, created by statute and are responsible with separate powers expressly conferred by the legislature. So it's just understanding what those different areas are and how they work together um, and that the board and the commission are part of a whole. Um, personnel commission rules and regs support the district's mission and maintain the principles of the merit system at the same time. And building relationships, um, again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come here tonight to, to share some more information about the Personnel Commission. Um, having the board attend Personnel Commission meetings, if you're available, um, we hold them once a month, typically the third Thursday of the month, sometimes that may change. Um, and having the Personnel Commission attend board meetings like tonight. I'm holding a joint meeting such as this one to provide information to the board um, about the roles of each body. Um, and keeping in mind that both bodies are part of the district's mission, um, which is student achievement. Relationship takeaways, um, that again, that the board and the commission and administration have certain roles and responsibilities, and that we work collaboratively together and, and honor those different roles and responsibilities. And this is just a, a, a chart that, um, um, has been around for a while and sort of describes a few different areas. Um, I was just going to touch on a couple. Um, the under the in the middle where it says establishes openings, the board has the um, authority to determine how many custodians we need to have in the district. Um, the commission doesn't decide how many people that we hire, but instead they um, conduct, recruit, and test, and then the district determines how many people we're actually going to have to do that role. And then um, the commission certifies an elig eligible candidates that have tested, and then the district is the hiring authority. The board is the hiring authority, not the commission. So it's just a couple areas that I wanted to touch on. And the benefits of being a merit system. 
Um, I think the first one for me really sums it up. It's designed to ensure the practice of fairness and impartiality in the selection, retention, and promotion of classified employees. Um, and you can read through the rest, but I feel like that one um, is what really, um, for me, is what really embodies um, the merit system. And lastly, uh, merit system resources. Um, CSPCA, as I mentioned, that's the California School Personnel Commissioners Association is our statewide organization. Um, MeritSystem.org is a great website with lots of information on it. Um, there are three different associations in Northern California, Southern California, and San Diego. Um, I've been serving on the Northern California board for, I think, about the past three, four years, um, and served as a director at large, and then vice president, and currently am president of the Northern California Association. Um, the CSPCA also offers a Merit Academy, which is you just saw a very brief overview of what the commission is about. That's a very deep dive into um, what the Merit System and Personnel Commission are all about. It's about an eight session, um, eight three-hour sessions um, over Zoom. Um, it's held once a year with amazing speakers and really some great information. Um, the annual conference is also coming up, as I mentioned. That's in March, March uh, 3rd, 4th, and 5th um, in Monterey. And the CSPAC also has um, an email communication group with other districts and directors and commissioners. Um, if we're facing an issue and we're trying to see what other districts are doing, we have a group that we can email and gather more information and connect with other folks. Um, and then, of course, um, other resources, the Merit System Rules and Regulations, as I mentioned, are on our website, the California Ed Code, the Collective Bargaining Agreement, and, of course, board policy. And that's my presentation. Um, I was going to ask um, the commissioners if they would like to come up and um, say just a brief word of why they, um, if they want, um, why they decided to be on the commission and serve in that role. Um, and then I'm happy to answer any questions that the board has. Okay. All right, good evening, board. Mr. Sheckman, uh, nice to see you all. Uh, as Pam said, I've been um, an administrator for a number of years and a teacher, um, 20 years here in the district for new members that don't know me. I'm proud to be a former PBUSD person. My kids went through our schools and um, I still live in the neighborhood and so I was uh, happy to serve. Um, being on the certificated side, uh, didn't know much about the merit system, so it's been a really interesting process. Um, and I have to say, I really believe in the merit system. Not all districts use it, and so I'm proud that PBUSD is doing that. Um, I learned a ton, and it was super interesting. Um, and I, I have to say that I really respect uh, Ms. Shanks and the work that she's done. She has a huge depth of knowledge from her experience, um, taught us commissioners a ton. Um, and knows a lot of, of folks around the state and has just done a lot of research and a lot of professional development um, and could easily teach a lot of classes on it. So it's just been very interesting. I appreciate giving back to the community. Um, didn't do it for the money. Um, <laughs> we give our money back to the, uh, to the um, scholarship program. Anyway, the little bit that we get. Um, but yeah, it was just a great experience. I appreciate the opportunity to do that. My session is, or my, my uh, Service is over in December, so um, y'all will be able to pick somebody else. But um, I've appreciated serving, and I appreciate Ms. Shanks and the work that she's done for us. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Hi, I'm Catherine Griffin, also new to the commission this year. Um, and yes, Pam has been a pleasure, and she has worked really hard with us. Um, I was able to participate in the Merit Academy and watched Philip over Zoom and learned a lot through the process of the year. Uh, I felt that it was really important to have a member of the commission who had actually come up through the ranks as a classified employee. Um, I've done a lot of different classified jobs, worked with a lot of different people, and I think that adds to what we can bring to the positions. Um, I look forward to going forward. I know we're going to have another new member, but I think that we're developing a really great team and appreciate being able to work with you, the board, because, you know, 
this is definitely something we do in tandem. So thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Elvia Torres, and I am a product of PVUSD. I grew up in this community. I went to Hall District, Pajaro Valley, Pajaro School, and then Watsonville High. So I live in the community. This is my way to give back. Um, I want to be an example to everybody in my community, and I've known Pam for some time. And as she shared, I also worked with PVUSD 20, 25 years ago, that's a long time ago. But I worked on the class on the certificated side, not on the classified side. So um, I'm here to um, assist with my human resource background, which with um, whatever I can. So thank you for having me. So I'm able to answer any questions if the board has any questions. Thank you. Um, do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for any discussion from the board. Trustee DeSerpa. Pam Shanks, I didn't know you were serving as the president <laughs> of the association. That's, that's big stuff. For about two days now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pam. That was a really informative presentation. Um, for those of us who have worked in county government or places with merit system, I think we're all well aware. One of my questions I have, though, is when people apply, sometimes if they don't put the exact language that's like posted in the job announcement, they don't sometimes screen in for jobs. That, uh, that's been my experience in county services. Do you find that here? Are, do you, so like when, when people apply for jobs, if they don't use the exact language right in the job description. So I'm just wondering how we handle that. Yeah, so you know, we um, do accept applications through EdJoin, and um, with the difficulties of recruiting over the last handful of years, one of the things that we are doing is um, taking in resumes as well with the application. So if the, there's information maybe that isn't included, because the application only has the last three employers too, so we're also really looking for um, some broader experience. So if somebody can show us in their resume, um, that they have the experience that's related to the job that they're applying for, then they would be screened in. So we're definitely trying to broaden that more than being so restrictive. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board? Thank you for this presentation, very informative. I'd like to attend one of your meetings sometime and get myself free on a Thursday. Sure, I'll um, start including the board on um, the agendas that I put out so that you know when the uh, meetings are happening. They take place in the HR conference room, so they're here in this office. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, Dr. Holm? Oh, did she? Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. So other comments well um, I will say thank you very I agree very informative um, presentation appreciative of that and I was going to ask you what you already just told trustee Bolano Scow if you could start including the board Absolutely. on those communications out you said it's usually the third Thursday you get there could be some changes with that and w did you say what time uh, five o'clock five o'clock mm -hmm. okay so yeah if you could and do you how in advanced do you send those out a um, week like three days yeah so we we also follow the brown act okay. um just like the board does so i usually send them out monday evening right at five o'clock um okay. which is three days prior yeah. to when the meeting takes place perfect so that's mm -hmm. when we can be trying to watch for those yes okay yeah and it's the schedule very much i mean you said there could be um, it's generally a Thursday. Sometimes it can be the second Thursday, the third Thursday. It kind of depends. But I, on our website, the, um, the uh, schedule of meetings through, um, I do them July through June, uh -huh. um, is on our website as well. So you can always um, take a peek there. I can also send that to the board so that they're aware of when the meetings are. And then, um, but like I said, sometimes they do um, change around depending on the commissioner's availability. So, oh, so it sounds like we're on the beginning of July. You set the calendar for that for July Fiscal through June. Year from mm -hmm. July through June. Okay, yes, perfect. yeah, and we pretty much stick to them as close as we can. Sure. Unless some conflict comes up. Okay, wonderful, thank you You're again welcome. for your report. You're welcome. Have a lovely thank rest you. of the evening. Oh, well, you're gonna be back. Sorry, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> a teaser. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, moving on to item 9.2, student services report on wellness. And this report will be presented by Chrissy McLean, coordinator of counseling programs. Oh, and Miss Gary. Good evening, President Home Board Trustees and Interim Superintendent, uh, Mr. Sheckman. I'm just kicking it off really quickly because I'm very excited and proud of the work that Student Services is doing in terms of wellness. Um, it is estimated that over 85% of students, um, uh, teens, have some type of mental disorder at this time. The work that we're doing in PVUSD is remarkable work, and uh, one of our flagship sites is Cesar Chavez Middle School, which you'll hear about this evening, who has tier one in place, and then the wellness space, which you started to hear about. Um, I just checked the data to look at the outcomes of our students. I looked at four indicators, and with all of the middle schools, including the junior high, uh, Cesar Chavez has the lowest num uh, rate of suspensions as an, in accordance with um, their enrollment. They have the they have the students indicated that they are the happiest in the district, and they have the highest average GPA. So all of these are great outcomes for our students, and I attribute to the work that we're doing with the socio-emotional work on the school sites. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Ms. McLean. Good evening. Thank you, uh, President Holm, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Sheckman. Um, let me push play on this timer because um, time changed, too. So. What time is it? <laughs> um, so I'm happy to present today to talk about whole child, whole family, whole community, and really this, uh, the, the current student services journey um, across uh, PVUSD in this realm. Most of the work that we're doing is embedded in LCAP number six, climate and culture, creating a culture where all adults provide a safe, supportive, and positive school environment, as well as LCAP number seven, family engagement. So through this presentation, I'm going to talk about three parts. Um, this is our student services journey, and we have only just begun. This is our journey for the last few years. I'm going to first just talk about the Family Engagement Wellness Center um, that opened on December 21. I will be talking about the grant that I am uh, currently working in, SB HIP. And then I'm going to just uh, speak a moment to um, a third grant that uh, student services is starting to work on on July 1st, just so that you can kind of see the rounded picture. So first of all, um, Family Engagement and Wellness Center. So um, I was fortunate enough in December 2021 when we opened the Family Engagement Wellness Center to be a part of that onboarding, part of working with the partners, the design, and that was really the foundation of increasing our connection to all of our community partners and ensuring that we have wraparound services for our students and our families. You know, we have the food bank, we have um, a, a clinician on there, we have Salud para la Gente in there, now they even have the mobile van. We have um, case managers also from PVPSA in there. We have our Healthy Start. The point of the, the Family Engagement and Wellness Center is that families and students, when they need something, they go to the Family Engagement Wellness Center and we can, can help support them in connecting to that community partner. Instead of having to send them all around town, we can do the connecting right there in that space. And so one of the, the important things to recognize about the Family Engagement Wellness Center is that is where one of our behavioral health um, and student support referral systems originated. So with the Family Engagement Wellness Center is where we, uh, we introduced our digital referral system, a digital closed loop referral system where we could reach out to the multitude of resources in the community. And that usage has grown from the, the Family Engagement and Wellness Center. And so, um, and here are some of our partners. And also, I put a link in here. I know you don't have this link per se, but uh, we can resend it if you like. That is the update that Mr. Slider um, did about the numbers of the Family Engagement Wellness Center. And so I do um, wanted to put that there if people wanted to look at that uh, to go back and see those, those updates. And uh, Mr. Ben Slider is doing a wonderful job um, continuing the, the supports for families and expanding partnerships at the Family Engagement Wellness Center. So then I'm going to move on to the, the SBHIP um, Behavioral Health Wellness Program grant. So very quickly, and I'm just going to speak to a couple points up here. 
so that you could understand this uh, $2 million grant that we're in the process of doing. It is um, part of California's uh, Children and Youth Behavioral Health Initiative. California is really moving towards trying to center schools as places for wellness. So with that, there's multiple grants going out. The SBHIP is this incentive grant to sort of help schools um, rebuild their uh, behavioral health programs to match some of the goals. California is in the, the, um, in the middle of trying to reimagine and transform the systems that support behavioral health for California's children. And they know that the place to do that is in the schools. If we want the kids to have the services, we bring it to the schools. So this is a one-time expenditure grant. Um, we received the, the nearly $2 million grant. We were selected by the county and by the um, Central California Alliance for Health as the district to do this work because we were prepared with our staffing more than other county districts. And today we just had our SBHIP check-in meeting and the uh, Central California Alliance for Health who is working with other counties in this same grant we're very impressed with how far along we are and how we're meeting these milestones. This is a milestone grant, meaning you have the, the plans that we set for it, as we meet them, then we get another check. So the objectives for this grant with PBUSD are mainly improving access and coordination um, with community partners, making sure we're addressing those individual student needs with the appropriate level of support. Um, it allows us to um, increase complementary services. We want to build on our, our multi-tiered systems of, of support and strengthen the, the strengths of how those multi-tiered uh, systems of support teams at our schools are operating, to, that they are identifying and matching the correct intervention with students. And it expands our commitment to the whole child, the whole family, and the whole community. And again, um, going back to the Family Engagement and Wellness Center where we have all those wraparound services, it does leverage those relationships that we've already built and the digital referral system that we utilize to reach all the partners and give all the schools the same access. So the, in this grant there are targeted interventions and um, we pulled counselors, we pulled mental health clinicians and then we worked with our, our partners and the uh, California Central Alliance for Health to pick from uh, about 14 list of interventions produced by the state, and we chose behavioral health wellness programs, behavioral health screening and referrals, and building stronger partnerships to increase access to medical services. Today, I'm only going to address behavioral health and wellness programs. And we developed these plans earlier with our Santa Cruz County Office of Ed partners and PVPSA. So um, the main um, focus of this one project plan, there's three big project plans in this grant, is really the creation of dedicated wellness spaces, the expansion of training programs, um, piloting some new interventions, so increasing that intervention list, especially the middle interventions, the tier two, and adding as many new partners from the community that we could access as possible. We know it's gonna take a lot of folks and a lot of resources to make sure that we can be here for our students and give them the, the um, supports that they deserve. So some of the elements here for this behavioral health wellness program portion of the grant, student wellness spaces at school sites. Those are those, those social emotional focused behavioral health wellness sites, expanding training curriculum, um, increasing our MTSS services and programs, and also promoting uh, um, mental health well-being and reducing stigma and anything that we can fill, uh, any partner that we can find to help fill current ser service gaps. So uh, outcomes, we're expanding facilities, uh, more range, uh, more access to services, um, building s small groups, really building the capacity of our adults. We know we can't just rely on counselors, we need all the adults on the campuses to know that they have a way to connect with the student and be there for a student. So let's get to the good part, um, wellness spaces. So the PVUSD wellness spaces as outlined in the SBHIP grant, and here's a picture of Cesar Chavez, I'll show you another picture in a moment, um, 
are based around this, this idea of supports for all, supports for some, and supports for uh, more in intensified supports, tier one, tier two, and tier three. So in this ideal space that is outlined in the grant, there is a space where um, all students are welcome, like a bigger room where all students are welcome. And connected is a room where you could have your small group or they might call tier two interventions. And as well, having co-located, connected right there, one-on-one um, -on -one offices for those intensified tier three supports. All of the wellness services in one space. But that tier one space is really the space that is transformational. So having a space where all students are welcome, where they can um, learn coping skills, decompress, check in with themselves, feel safe. So that is the part that is really making some impact. Um, sup the assistant superintendent of secondary spoke to some of the outcomes at Cesar Chavez. I'm gonna look to show you some of the, the visits here at Cesar Chavez. Number one, they had the counselors who are so dedicated there, Veronica Fernandez and Angelica Flores, when we started designing this space, um, they knew it was a good idea to go and bring all the teachers through and make sure that they're, t they're touring the space with the students so the students know how to use the space, what the space was about, and the teachers knew. As well, because um, Principal Benavides has made a very strong, clear um, expectation of social-emotional learning on that site, as evidenced by their Son de Gros data, the teachers and the students understood how to use that and knew when it said, well, when you're feeling this way, you can go here to check in. So they have the components to actually produce some results pretty quickly. So when they first get to the space, they, the students and teachers had this and students, they check in on a computer. This is a, their little sign that they see. So from class, they're allowed to get a pass from the teacher if they need to check, to um, sort of reconnect or need to refocus or, or you know, they're, they're noticing that they're not connecting with, the, with what's happening in class and they need a short break. So they can go to the uh, wellness space. Again, they, here they, they named it Peace Pod. So they had the, 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 the students name it, the teachers and the parents on, on back to school night got to be part of the naming process. Um, and then they stay for about 15 minutes. That's the time limit that the, the school decided on. And then they get a pass to go back to class. The counselors have been so happily surprised that the kids just go back. They say, okay, it's 15 minutes. And they say, okay, and they go back to go access their education. They've had their moment to reconnect, refocus, and they happily just go back. This is an example from our Son de Gros data of what a student said about um, the space. This, our Son to Grow, one aspect of the Son to Grow social emotional platform is where there's a weekly reflection where students can reflect and write about something. And this question this week was, tell us about something going on at school. And as you can see, um, it's something that welcomes every student and teacher at the school. It makes us feel more connected to everyone and relieves many things off our shoulders. What a gift. And that's just one student. For me, even just one student feeling that way is, feels to me pretty monumental. But here at Cesar Chavez, so far, since August 30th, we've had 2,800, I'm sorry, 2,426 visits to their wellness space. And Trustee Flores, you saw the space there. Right? Um, this is exciting. Now, it is also open at lunch and, and break, and students do like to be there in lunch and break when we disaggregated the data. It's 298 unique students have accessed that space throughout different times of the day. That's 55% of the students. That's more than half of the students at Cesar Chavez have accessed and utilized their wellness space. That's transformational. So instead of, of the, the amount that this reduces of students having to hold in whatever's going on, feel alone and maybe not even feel alone, not know what they're feeling, act out, um, disengage, miss the learning, those instances reduce. They reduce. When we can train, we can help teach our students, 
to be okay with their feelings, know they can manage them, and get reconnected to the goals that they have, and especially their education. I'm also showing you a picture of um, Lakeview Middle School. So Lakeview, I'm way over time, so I'm gonna go super fast right now. Lakeview Middle School is um, one of the sites that it does not have the co-located yet, but it has the tier one space. Um, what's wonderful there, they have uh, four counselors that are taking turns um, uh, in there on certain days and greeting the students and logging what they're there to visit for. Uh, the next year is the hope to attach the co-located small group and one-on-one space. And here's some data for, for them. 838 visits to their wellness space, 147 unique for Pajaro Middle School, 75 unique for uh, Lakeview Middle School. That's 51% of the Pajaro Middle School students have utilized that wellness space. 18% of Lakeview Middle School. What's great, we don't know exactly why those are different, but we have the data and we can start and we can investigate and we can make sure that we're, um, uh, that we're reaching out to all the students and informing all the students as best as we can and that the, the teachers also to see where they're at in understanding the full utilization of the wellness space. So this is a, a chart of visiting for needing a, um, a safe space or a break versus one-to-one -one counseling for that site. And here is almost done, uh, and Soldo. Uh, and Soldo Elementary also has a wellness space. They don't have as much staffing, so the data is much less. Um, this is an example of a social-emotional counselor providing a social-emotional learning lesson for the students. Um, teachers can bring kids in there, but also kids are just coming in and checking in. In elementary school, they're learning to come and say, I need a break. They get there, I was looking at the time logs, they're staying 15 minutes and going back to, to class. Reconnected, refocused, able to feel good about themselves, able and able to engage in education. They did a school naming process as well and they called it, they call it the Zen Den. This is just an example in this same project plan one of the components besides building wellness spaces is training our adults, multiple adults, to be able to be there for students. These are the many different things that we're training folks to, and this is the goal of the, the training that will be finished by uh, December 2024. This is our goal of uh, training all of our adults uh, in our campuses. Um, some plans by next year, we're hoping to open these at three of the high schools. We're gonna expand a middle school and elementary. Um, and the last part, the, as I did the, I said we do the ARC, you've already heard about the grant. Dr. Acoraz has been up here talking to you about the, the next grant that's coming that will focus on attendance, behavior, social, emotional learning, and family engagement. Um, the student services team and Dr. Acoraz are planning now for that July kickoff. And thank you for, um, Hearing about the journey that has just begun, about how we were hoping to transform and empower our youth to connect, have a sense of belonging, and have the tools to really engage with their education as best as possible. Any questions? Um, thank you. Uh, do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, I will bring it back to the board for discussion um, and or comments, questions. Trust, sorry, Trustee Flores. I'd just like to start by saying yes, I was able to go to the Cesar Chavez uh, Wellness Center and it was amazing. I, if that's gonna be the model for our other schools, then I think it was great. And I love to see how the kids can, you know, on their own decide I need a break right now. Mm -hmm. and they have this amazing place where they can come mm -hmm. and get that support. Um, I love that the social emotional counselor and academic counselor are mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. um, connected to the space mm -hmm. so they can, you know, if, if a child's, you know, just struggling with the, with the work at that time and just needs to step away because they're upset with themselves for not understanding it, if they go there and they have the academic counselor, maybe they can give them help. And then if it's, you know, something else, if it's a social emotional, reason then they I just I thought that was really great and mm -hmm. I loved how they were saying that 
in the morning, you know, the kids that get there early for breakfast club, you know, they come in there and mm -hmm. at breaks and lunch. And mm -hmm. so it's it's created an, a space now for belonging. And so, yeah, I really, really thought it was a great model. Mm -hmm. and thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Bolano Scout. Yes, thank you for this presentation. Um, uh, just a question about the rollout to the middle schools and what kind of funding are we providing for these wellness centers? Is this going to be presumably equitable for all of our high schools and middle schools, or is that kind of grant dependent? Can you just talk about the specifics of that? It is grant dependent. Um, we have a consultant that I've been working with, that same consultant that actually worked with us to open the Family Engagement and Wellness Center. Um, and so we are assessing sites to see um, if there are certain components, the components that are there first, the bonus of Cesar Chavez, there was two major things that Cesar Chavez had going on for them. Number one, um, they already were uh, um, utilizing Son to Grow and had a strong basis of social emotional learning as an expectation around that campus. Um, those two powerful counselors are very good collaborators and the space itself, we had to do a lot of, uh, uh, everybody pitched in, m and um, sort of fixing it up but there was no construction that was needed because it already had the, the couple offices. It had a bigger office that was perfect for the small groups. And it has that one office um, with the window, which really helps if two people are in the office, the counselor still can see if a student comes in. It just had the, the perfect layout. Um, same with Ansoldo. The, it had the layout to be able to have two and one. So you know we know that there are different, um, different readiness levels at the schools. And so we're continually just checking their, their social emotional learning competencies as being something pushed around the school and the physical capabilities of how we can make this space as best as possible to match the grant and how the, um, the MTSS team and their, their counseling team is uh, working efficiently to be able to provide those services. And so if we think if, the, if that site thinks they can keep that door open, um, all day, that's also a good factor. How, but how much money is it per, like that's such Chavez, how much money are they getting for that site? That one, I think we spent around $37,000. And that's like mostly on furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, the grant is um, $1.94 million to do multiple things, but this part of the project is 60% uh, of it, so I don't have the exact number, but 60% of 1.94 is for this part of the grant. Well, I, I would, my hope would be that we would try to find a way to get that to Rolling Hills and EA Hall oh as yeah. well. Oh yeah. I know they, they are starting to have a center, but don't have money for furniture right now. And I'm sure yeah. there's a reason for that. But yeah, so we, are, we have been assessing those schools. We've been to both of those schools to assess for space and certain things. Our hope is to put them in all those schools. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and our student trustee. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for this really cool presentation. I mean, I think this is amazing because we know that the social emotional support is the root to student success. Um, I also, um, I look forward to seeing how this looks at different sites and um, how students can grow from this kind of support. Um, and I was wondering if student input is like taken into consideration for the development of these spaces. Thank you for asking that. Um, so far we've polled some students about the different types of furniture um, and that is one of the components as we roll them out at the high schools to have um, a survey to send to the students and get that student feedback. So I definitely will be utilizing um, your expertise, if you don't mind, and how you think the best way to elicit that feedback from your peers. Thank you. Anyone else? Trustee De Serpa. Thank you. This is super exciting. So we have so many initiatives happening right now for student wellness. Mm -hmm. So let, can I just ask some questions so that I can keep it all straight, what, what we're doing? Sure. Okay, so this is LCSSP, a grant of $1.94 million through behavioral health. So this one is SP HIP. Um, I'm, 
So S this, the one I just complained about, I uh, complained about. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not complaining. Um, uh, this middle one is SB hip, and the next one what that Dr. Alcaraz. What does that stand for? SB oh, I didn't tell you. It's learning community. SB hip stands for Student Behavioral Health Incentive Program, and that's through the State Department of Behavioral Health. Yes. Okay. So how is that different than the wellness centers that we've already established on our comprehensive high schools? Is it different? It's different, right? It, it is different. There are, so these are, these are um, wellness spaces, and it's true, we did, like when I was at Watsonville High School, we said, okay, we need a space. So I found a classroom, and Ms. Nunez went and found a bunch of resources, and we built a, a, a wellness room, just kind of sort of like right. this. Right, so with the partnerships with the community, that's what I'm talking about, with Salud and... Oh, so that is, you're talking about the Family Engagement Wellness Center. Yeah. So, so the this way is something totally different. This than is that. different because this is. But some of the same elements exist, right? Some well, these are like behavioral health, social, emotional focused okay. on the school site, specific to the school site and the students. The family engagement and wellness center is wraparound services um, that helps us connect our families and our students to every community partner. To resources, okay. yeah. Whether they need rent, whether they need yeah, food, whether it. they need okay. any of those things. So. So that's a that's a, a bit more. That's so all tell the me services. tell me the schools that this is going into. So we have Cesar Chavez. What else? So the ones that it's at right now. Yeah. We have Ann Soto. Right. We have Cesar Chavez. Uh huh. And we have um, Lakeview has the Tier One um, section of it. And will there is there a proposal to to open more or is that yes. it? Yes, and our hope is by the end of next year. Yeah. The the hope is we'll do all the high schools, and it, it, we're hoping we can do all the middle schools. So we'll do pa Pajaro Middle. I hope. Yeah. I've already toured um, Pajaro Middle with um, M and O to look at space. Yeah. Space, okay. and then we're going to start inviting the. The, the folks to come and look at that space. And this will go into Aptos Junior High as well? We have done an assessment at Aptos High as well. Aptos Junior and Aptos We did High. an assessment at Aptos Junior High. That's great, okay. Mm -hmm. And then is there a secondary grant that will help us continue to operate or is it just this? There is, we are working with Santa Cruz County who wants to also really help us complete this. And so they have some offerings of some grants, but Nothing is signed yet, mm -hmm. uh, as well. And I can come back at another time uh, okay. to show you the, the slides of the multiple um, grants and initiatives that California is rolling out. So there's going to be lots and lots of opportunity. I get the emails, so I <laughs> see them. Um, and so I saw in here PBPSA and Encompass. So mm -hmm. why would we Encompass? I mean, I understand it's the biggest nonprofit in the county, but why wouldn't we use our own local PBPSA to help deliver? some of these services oh, we do we, we then why is en encompass on the list because we also use encompass okay. the more resource we use monarch um, mm -hmm. we also use salute para la gente for behavioral health services as well especially if a student is a, uh, um, a already a client of salute para la gente we and they need behavioral health services uh, then we will hook them up so that they are at least being seen by their their same doctor and they're sharing that information are we hiring any new positions off of any of this um, grant money? No. no. We're the just using partners, okay. We're, we're using partners and there's other things that I can, so increasing the access to partners plus some of the systems that I didn't talk about in here of how California is transforming uh, behavior health, especially in the schools, have lots of opportunities for schools to um, create some reimbursable items. Okay, so I would like to tell you, I just read a study mm -hmm. that was evidence-based that showed that kids that run or people that run have um, just as good a result as people who take antidepressants. Mm. So in St. Louis, Missouri, where I went to graduate school, the school district and the county partnered. It was a public, pri or the, not the county, the school district and I think private people um, partnered and they built this unbelievable workout like venue so it had like an olympic-sized pool it's got an unbelievable workout space 
and kids could exercise there during the day. All the different schools filtered in and, and had their kids train there. And then at night it was open to the public and on weekends. I would love to see us do something like that because that would that would be a center for wellness too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and we actually at Cesar Chavez, we talked about how we could use that. That's part of why we put the yoga station over there because they said some kids like to exercise and they have a punching bag in there too in, in one of the little corners because it helps the kids. And then we are looking at the outside. We just got some, some picnic tables for the outside, but how we could put some of that kind of equipment, you know, that use the really nice sort of workout equipment that you see in parks. Like how can we put that near some of these wellness centers? Because we know that, that um, you know, taking care of your body does take care of your overall well-being. Yeah. You know, sometimes those are the times that, we're s that we slow down enough to check in with ourselves. Thanks, it was a great presentation, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. very exciting, lots of stuff happening in the state of California around this. I hope to come back and talk about more in the next semester. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts from anyone else? Well, Chris, I just I want to thank you, yeah, for the very thorough presentation. I appreciate that. Um, I several of the questions I was pondering in my head got answered with Trustee Disserpa's questions from mm -hmm. you, um, especially the clarity of the differences of mm -hmm. the programs, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there was one that you had mentioned, I just wanted to clarify when you said partnering or working with Santa Cruz County, mm -hmm. Santa Cruz County Office of Education, I just wanted I to meant Santa Cruz County Office of Education. Okay, I just wanted to clarify, because mm -hmm. we, we have other partnerships with Santa Cruz County, mm -hmm. as well as Santa Cruz County mm -hmm. Office of Education, yes. so I just thank wanted you to for clarify. Helping me no, clarify. no, no, um, I appreciate it. Again, thank you, very thorough presentation. I am not gonna wish you a lovely and good evening, because you're coming back too, Oh, yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thanks. Okay, moving on to our action items, we will start with item 10.1, the appointment in terms of personnel commission members, announcement of candidate for board appointed seat, and this report will be presented uh, by our Director of Classified Human Resources, Pam Shanks. Good evening again. Um, the item before you tonight um, is the item where the board um, publicly announces the name of the person it, attends to, it intends to appoint for the upcoming vacancy. As you heard earlier, Mr. Casey O'Brien um, will not be serving another term. He did turn in his resignation. Um, so in order to um, review those interested, a subcommittee of the board was established to review the interested candidates, and it was the recommendation of the subcommittee to move Ms. Esther Morillo forward as the board's candidate to fill the upcoming three-year term, um, which will expire in 2026. Um, she's actually here. Where is she? There she is. <laughs> you want to come up? <laughs> Um, Ms. Morillo has worked for the worked for the PVUSD. She retired um, for over 30 years and is a strong proponent of the merit system and fairness for classified employees. Um, she is active in the Watsonville community, having volunteered with the Relay for Life organization for the past 18 years, and continues to volunteer for fundraising events for various nonprofit organizations in the area. She looks forward to the opportunity to serve her community and ensure the continued success of the merit system in our district. Um, she will make a great addition as a personnel commissioner. Um, at a future, this is the announcement tonight of who you, um, the board is announcing as their um, appointee. Um, uh, in December, there will actually be a public hearing held. At that point, the appointment is actually made. So the Ed Code does say that there does need to be a little bit of time between the announcement and the um, public hearing and appointment. Um, so that will come back to the board at a December meeting. Um, so this evening I do ask the board to publicly announce Ms. Morillo as the board appointee to the Personnel Commission. Um, I'm honored and excited uh, to continue to serve PVUSD if appointed and to also serve our community and the students that we serve. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, do we have any um, public speakers to this item? We do not. Okay, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for any discussion from the board, questions or comments. Trustee Bolano scow Well, I think Esther Modi is an excellent choice uh, and I'm looking forward
looking forward to seeing the personnel commission in action but I, a great choice thank you for applying thank you for all of your service to our district and your continued service so I'd like to make a motion uh, if you need a motion we, we do, do. To, uh, to approve this announcement of Esther what are you I'll second congratulations well I guess we haven't voted yet but um, thank you um, Esther for um, volunteering to be part of the personnel commission we really appreciate your service here in all the years in the district and as well of um, stepping forward for this honor thank you trustee Solano Scowen and trustee Serpa trustee Dodge jr. I also like to support this nomination you know Esther Morillo has dedicated many years to this district she had children that went to this district I know she eats and breeds PVOSD um, the city of Watsonville, the Pajaro, Unified, Pajaro Valley Unified School District, the organizations, the nonprofits, um, and uh, you know, thank you for applying, and I look forward to supporting this agenda. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Sure, I would just like to say um, thank you also for uh, your service to our community and applying for this position, and I look forward to seeing the um, personnel commission in action. Trustee Soto. Welcome aboard, Esther. I know you're a firecracker. I know your history. We've, uh, our previous uh, work relationship. Um, but uh, you're a good choice for this, and I know you'll fight for the classified because uh, I know you, you're always looking out for their best interests, and you know they, they need a, a good voice and a powerful voice, so welcome aboard. Well, I will just tie up the comments and say you know just when you thought you were done with us and retired we just pulled you back in didn't we um, and I, I agree with everything that's been said I think you're the perfect candidate I know you will um, represent our classified school employees um, very well and I am honored to be in this position to be supporting you here tonight so welcome I think I got a call vote <laughs> so we have a first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the vote passes 601. Welcome, Esther. Moving on to item 10.2, approved tentative agreement, salary schedule and public disclosure with Communication Workers of America. This report will be presented by our Assistant Superintendent of HR, Allison Niazawa. Thank you. Hi. Board of Trustees, um, Superintendent Sheckman, I'd like to invite Louie up with me, if he would. It is his birthday, and he stayed here and spent his birthday with us to approve this very important agenda item. Yes. I just want to echo what Louie said earlier in the CWA um, public comment portion of the night. I, I really appreciate he came out of retirement to take over this charter in San Jose um, and so did one of his colleagues and I really appreciate their leadership and their collaboration with us. Um, their communications workers of America and so they do a lot in the private sector and they do this little sublet of our substitutes in the education system so I really appreciate that. Louis has experience but they're all their other two administrators really um, trusted us to help explain how school districts work and how this impacts the members that they're trying to represent. So I really appreciate that. Um, I'm also proud of the TA that we came up with. Um, I think with the increase of wages, as we know, we need to attract and keep subs in our district. They're a vital um, component of our operations. Um, and we also put in place some um, items that their membership has been asking for with regards to getting to tier two a little bit quicker So we went down from two years to one year. It was previously three. So we've, we've even ratcheted it down in the last few years um, We have supplemental pay rates for them for both working in long-term sub positions and like attending back to school night and whatnot as well as working in the after-school program and then some other pieces just about their working their workload when we have them in long-term sub positions they wanted to be kind of seen as needing that prep period because they are taking on long-term sub positions and so they're included in that rotation and we decided on an hourly rate for them similar to what we do with PVFT so I respectfully request that you approve the TA and the public disclosure tonight so that we can move forward in the process do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. All right. 
Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for discussion. Any questions, comments? I need to make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second, and thank you both for your work, and welcome, and happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just thought everyone know you were staying for that. Anyone else? Happy birthday. <laughs> 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 well, the story goes that we're almost born in a strawberry field, so it's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, happy birthday, and thank you for being here. And sorry we had to keep you so late um, this evening, but thank you for being here. Um, so we have a first and a second, so I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. It car vote carries six zero one. <coughs> I think we're fine. Moving on to item ten point three, approval uh, approved provisional internship permit request for certificated employee. Rep this report will be presented by our director of human resources, Mr. Brian Saxon. Good evening, Vice President Acosta. Interim Superintendent Shuckman and board members. Uh, my name is Brian Saxon. I'm the director of uh, Certificated for Human Resources. And I come to you tonight with a request for you to approve a provisional internship permit for Mr. Jason Biancardi. Uh, he's a special education teacher at Amesti. Um, he's almost done with his intern requirements, but needs just a little bit of a gap here to, to finish that up. So this P PIP provisional internship permit allows him to do that. So I respectfully request that you would approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for discussion, for questions, comments. I'd like to make a motion to approve this provisional internship permit. Perfect. I have a first. Do I have a second? I second. Perfect. Any further discussion from the board? See none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Seeing so, vote pass the motion passes 601. Thank you. Thank you, you very Mr. much. Saxon. Moving to item 10.4, PBUSD and Cabrillo College Partners in PBUSD High School um, College and Career Centers. This report will be presented by our coordinator of counseling programs. We welcome back Chrissy McLean. Thank you, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Checkman, and I think President Holm is still around over there. Um, no? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'm going to, you've seen these slides before. Uh, in the past, this has been approved already. The partnership with Cabrillo and the placement of um, student support specialists in our college and career centers at the comprehensive high schools. So through the um, K-12 Strong Wor Workforce Program grant, it's a, a CTE-focused grant that's paired with community colleges, there is various funding. And the funding for um, these positions come out of that grant. But they're a shared partnership because we have that grant with, the, uh, with Cabrillo College. So um, this has been approved in the past. These, uh, the positions that were dreamed up, and I think you've heard this story before, or, oh, this isn't the story one, this is a different one, but, so, the, the hope is to increase access to community college, whether that be for dual enrollment, or even just for post-secondary choices, because we know how many students, if they get to uh, any post-secondary choice, if it's a community college, and they are guided well through that process, they will get to the university, and it, it um, increases our, our positive outcomes for our students. So um, again, these are Aptos, PV, and Watsonville High School. It's a full-time position that is hired by Cabrillo, but they're in our college uh, and career centers, working right next to our UCSC partners that are uh, helping students through EAOP and Gear Up. Um, and it's really just to sort of expand the services we provide students. We want a student to walk into College Career Center and whatever their choices may be, that they're gonna get um, as much support as possible to get to that post-secondary choice. 
Um, and as we are increasing the college and career centers to have more access for students, we have these partners are all in there and we have just recently last year we added digital nest as also one of the partners inside our college career centers and in many of our college and career centers we also have our migrant programs too so we want to be able to service our students um, in, in all the different needs that they have to ensure their success so this portion and I'll just read that first paragraph if you have not read it is really about the amount of money that is not coming from the gen general fund, but it's to approve the SSA to um, have these positions in partnership with Cabrillo. Um, this MOU was uh, approved on June 8, 2022 for the, the exact partnership. And this is just the next part to approve the SSA so that um, we can continue to have these uh, student support specialists in our college and career centers supporting our students. Wonderful. Questions? Yes, do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Any questions, comments? Oh, Trustee Flores. So you mentioned that this is um, the positions are being funded by Cabrillo. They're just u utilizing our space. Um, so what exactly does this budget, that says unbudgeted, but it would come from a grant, you said, mm -hmm. correct? So um, if I misspoke, I apologize. It's, okay. It's, the positions are being funded in partnership from the grant. And the grant awards both PVUSD and Cabrillo money to expand all of their programming, especially those um, CTE pathways and it's um, so one of the outlining targets in the grant is to increase the, the Cabrillo enrollment. And one way to do that is to ensure that we have a Cabrillo support, a student support specialist right in our schools. Because truth of the matter is, it, you know, our counselors at our schools always want to help our students with that, but they don't always know all of the pathway and their first priority does have to be the, the students right in front of them and their, their high school um, success. So this was the, the idea they came up collaboratively to make sure that we can service the students. Okay, I think it's a, a great idea and of mm -hmm. course, you know, would love, to, but just to do our due diligence. So what exactly is this almost 300,000 going towards? You mentioned that it's for the site service agreement. So that's so. to pay the, for the three, um, for the three site um, student support specialists, because we have one at Aptos, one at Watsonville High School, and one at uh, PV High School, and that is for the three years, the next three years. So that's separate from the position that Cabrillo will be that you said Cabrillo would be paying. The, so, and I, I apologize um, because I am definitely, I am a part of running the College and Career Center and making sure that we have the vision and we're providing the best services we can to our students. Um, I did not write this grant, so I can definitely come back and answer that question, but it's, it, the, the tricky part is it's not, Cabrillo is not paying from their general friend fund, PBUSD is not paying from their general fund. There's this big uh, grant that PBUSD and Cabrillo have applied to applied for together and received, and the money is coming straight from that grant. To, to just further elaborate, to fund the entirety of it, correct? Yes, and it funds actually more things. The grant is actually bigger than this amount um, because it, it also helps the CTE pathways. We were here just maybe a month ago talking about some of that. Um, to make sure that there's alignment across and lots of choices and clear pathways for students. So this is just one component of that grant. Perfect. Thank you, and I'm sorry, I just had that elaborating part off of that response, so, but I'll bring it back to other board members. Yes, Trustee Bolanos. Yeah, back. thank you. I'm just curious <coughs> about our, uh, what are our numbers of our kids enrolling at Cabrillo in the last recent years? I apologize, I don't have that with me, but I'm happy to get that to you. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard Cabrillo's enrollment is down, and I think a lot of community college, colleges are because of the pandemic and recovery from that. I'm just wondering what are longer We have a trends. very high percentage of students from all of our high schools going to Cabrillo. Yeah. Cool.
Cabrillo yeah. loves the PBUSD. Yeah. We are their number one district far and away in this mm -hmm. county. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is also a decline in the state universities. Mm -hmm. But we can get those numbers. That's mm -hmm. easy to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to echo that. That's at the university level across the board. And that's it's not even isolated to our region in the state of California. It's a, it's a national issue, mm -hmm. the decline in enrollment at higher ed. Mm -hmm. And if I might just add how many of them are finishing the rates of success at Cabrillo would be good to know if we're, mm -hmm. I don't know if we're tracking that, mm -hmm. but that would be. We let Cabrillo do that. Oh. Okay, we can get that done. Okay. Trustee DeSerpa. I was just going to comment on the Cabrillo stuff. We've gotten reports in the past that have mm -hmm. basically outlined every kid that's gone there and, mm -hmm. and if they're successful, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we, can, we can certainly get that from them. But it's free, so I mean, it's un it's really an unbelievable deal for mm -hmm. kids. Their first two years are completely no cost. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion for this? Oh, motion to would you yes, motion to approve. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. We have a first. Can I have a second? I'll second. Um, was there any other comments from any other board members or questions? Okay, so we have a first and a second, so I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes 601. Thank you, Chrissy, for being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can have a good night. <laughs> uh, item 10.5 approved notice of award for Pajaro Map. Pajaro Middle School Exterior Painting Project Number Two Zero Two Three Zero Seven Two. This report will be presented by our Director of Maintenance, Operations, and Facilities, Herlindo Fernandez. Welcome. Good evening, President Acosta, Interim Superintendent Checkman, Board of Trustees, Cabinet. My name is Herlindo Fernandez, and I'm the Director of Maintenance and Operations. I'm happy to please. Um, to bring forward this project, Pajar Middle School Exterior Painting. This project is funded by maintenance funding. On August 25th, the district advertised the Pajar Mi Middle Exterior Painting Project. A bid walk was held on the 29th of August, and on September 19th, there was Two, the district submitted, uh, received two sealed bids from the following contractors. Collar New Co Company came in at $242,000. Premier Builders came in at $158,301. I'm here to ask for the approval so we could continue with the contract for Pajaro Middle School exterior painting for Premier Builders. Thank you. Do we have um, any public speakers to this item? We do not. See none, I'll bring it back to the board for comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Trustee, I'm sorry, Trustee Soth, I'm looking at you and I'm just not saying your name. <laughs> <laughs> what color are we painting the photo? <laughs> <laughs> Pink and purple polka dots. It's, it's not staying the same, right? Um, We're gonna make it lively and liven up the neighborhood. Correct. We're, we're going to change the colors on it. Right now, we're working on the rendering, so we don't have the colors picked yet, right. but we are going to change the colors on it. Make it entertaining. Yep. What, and was there any other comments from any other board members? was just something I was going to note about that comment, that a lot of um, schools um, I've seen in different areas, and we do the same at the university, right? We'll paint in tones similar to the colors of that school. Mm -hmm. So is that a possibility? Like, at least accenting tones maybe for trims and such. So is that a possibility for consideration since we're going into this endeavor? And I'm not even sure what the, those colors are, but I'm not sure if, it's, you know, I would. Green and yellow? Green, green and yellow, yeah. I yeah. Went to so would school, that be? Green and yellow. So we have a possibility, or does that drive up the cost? <laughs> no. I mean, we have a green roof right now, and okay. a green trim. So it's it is already in there. So we're trying to get some colors that go with that. It's a little hard, which we're we're going into the gray tones, but I didn't we didn't really like the rendering. So we're trying to shoot well, some other colors that are look good in that area. Well, Just because a lot of the buildings around there are they're coming up with new colors and. You know, we want to brighten up that area too. 
and we want to make it look different so when the kids come back I mean we painted the same color it's gonna look pretty much the same and they're not gonna notice much of a difference so we're trying to make a an impact when they come back what's well, I'm saying if you paint the body yellow and the trim green you'll make a statement and then and then black. with that gym being art deco with all those ornate pieces on there yeah. it's already outlined right now but if you get someone there to detail all the little oh yeah that's part of the scope we're gonna there. we're gonna come in there and detail that that art deco that's in that gym yeah so they that, can stand that, out that would really stand out yep especially on the the street side yeah we're pick, we're also picking up the ornamental fencing too give it a, another coat of black paint so it stands out as well so uh, I'm just curious it's a big gap between the two bids what's what what gives there I mean what, what's up with is there a labor probably beer companies too I mean from the company color new I think they're out of uh, San Francisco area maybe and then this one's Premier Builders is out of Gilroy, more local. We do a lot of business with them, right? Yeah, yeah. we do. I'll make a motion to approve it. Sounds good to me. Oh, you just stripped that from Trustee oh, Soka. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, so we have a first and a second. Um, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? See none. Motion carries six zero one. Happy painting. Thank President you. President Costa, can I make a quick comment? Sure. Yes, please. Um, usually these items are on the consent agenda, and we agreed to keep this in the public eye. We want this world to see what's going on with Pajaro Middle, and maybe now, based on your conversation, we'll get calls from the community with some color suggestions. <laughs> Thanks, Orlando. Really appreciate it. Looking Thank forward you. to that job. Thanks, All right. Orlando. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, our consent agenda. These are items that are ru uh, routine items coming before the board. Are there any public speakers to our consent agenda? There's not. Okay, seeing none, are there any items that any board member wishes to uh, defer or pull? Seeing none, then can um, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as is presented? Motion to approve our consent agenda tonight. I have a first. Can second. I have a second? Trustee Soto, second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, seeing none, it, motion carries 601. Moving on. <coughs> Yes, to um, our report out of closed session. Let me switch gears and switch hats. Um, all right. On closed session item 2.2, I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by district administration on November 8, 2023, with four and three additional action items. And I'll need a second. A second. second. Sorry, Olivia. Can have it. Eva, you call the draw. <laughs> Flores, okay. <laughs> I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries 601. On closed session item 2.3, I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on November 8, 2023. With 15 and five additional action items, I need a second. A second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries 601. And I have a few announcements out of closed session. Um, our announcement one, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Rich Morin as the new director of ELA Social Studies and Ethnic Studies. Rich has been serving students since 2005 as a teacher at PV High, extended learning coordinator at PV High, assistant principal at Aptos High and PV High, principal at Aptos Junior High, and most recently the principal at Minnie White Elementary. Rich holds a Bachelor's of Science from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, a single subject credential in Biological Science from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and a Master's degree in Education Leadership and an 
and administrative credential from San Jose State University. We are excited to welcome this highly accomplished administrator to his new role. Welcome, Rich Moran. Announcement number two, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Ivan Rodriguez as the new assistant principal of Pajaro Valley High School. Ivan has been working with students since 2006 as a special education teacher at the Monterey County Office of Education as a special education teacher in the Alisal Union School District and most recently as the assistant principal for educational services in the Alisal Union School District. Ivan holds a Bachelor of Arts um, from CSUMB, a Education Specialist Credential and a Master's of Arts in Administrative Services Credential from Grand Canyon University. We are, wel are, we are pleased to welcome Ivan to PBSD and his new role, Go Grizzlies, and welcome Ivan Rodriguez. Yes, welcome. Um, no. Where did I? Just make sure. And our next upcoming board meeting, if I just check my calendar and confirm, I believe it is December 6th, Wednesday, December 6th. We look forward to seeing you all then. And with that, I will adjourn this meeting at 10.05 p.m. Have a good night, everyone, and thank, thank you, you for being here.